Hey everyone, welcome back to Team of Thought. Grab your coffee, water, tea, whatever you're drinking, go and get that. Um, I do hope you all are doing well, 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 well. This should be like a three hour maybe stream. When we open up the panel, it might go longer. So, yay. Um, <clears throat> We have some people from the Discord who will join us. Coco the Attorney is behind the scenes. Uh, DJ was just in, but she left. Um, so we're going to do some topics first, it seems, and then we'll get into the main topic so I can give, I can give the people time. As an intro, let me say, I stayed up last night, all night, recording a video for Black History Month. Um, it was including Jamaica and Megan and, and Harry and whatever. And I recorded it on my new camera. This is my new camera. Very good, amazing camera. Love it. It's definitely giving what needs to be gave. This is the drive to share the documents um, or the video over to my computer. Couldn't do it. For the life of me, I couldn't do it. I was so sad. I stayed up till 3 a.m. last night, refreshing, reloading, rebooting, re like everything. But um, I don't know when that footage is going to come out. And it really, really got to me. <laughs> Please drop by one if you can hear me. Um, that was really, really sad. So the footage is there. Um, everything is there. I recorded the entire video. Can edit it. So. If we have a tech person who knows what to do, let me know, because I was definitely not in the best of mood last night. So that's that on that. Um, thank you all so, so very much. Um, I have written a bunch of blog posts, and I wanted to start in January to like post my blogs, but I decided that I will do it in February, so you guys will see that. The Patreon will be up and running shortly this month. There will be merch. There will be merch. Um, we're going to start with two and see what happens from there. Um, and as we build out this platform and this community and this company or whatever, um, let's see how and what we can do with it. So um, to all the moderators who have spoken to me, thank you so, so much for all your help. I truly, truly appreciate the investment um, and the motivation to move forward in what I needed to do. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So Level Up Single Mom is behind the scenes and Coco the Attorney is also behind the scenes. DJ is supposed to be here. She just left um, to restart her computer and then she'll come back. So I will um, add these ladies. This is like a woman's fan, all right? Period. Um, in the meantime, after the intro, and then we'll get into some discussion. We have a larger discussion that we need to get into. But I kind of want us to warm up. So, uh, wait, 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 wait. BWMMB said, not me not getting added. So, this was not random. Um, it was, I started a live stream on Thursday, um, and the people who were a part of the live stream, and I, anyone who was there, um, went on Zoom and then we created an outline for a discussion that they wanted to have. So no, I didn't just like, <laughs> I didn't just like, oh, these are my favorites. <laughs> That's not what happened, but the, um, the, the, the link will be dropped. So, all right, let's get into the intro. Let's get into the intro. Ni hao. Who the told there was me now? Hey, I can't hear you. You're muted, by the way. Hey. Period voice. Coca the attorney better come in with her voice. Period. Period. Got the good mic on today. Mm -hmm. Good mic. Prr. 
Oh, oh, Eddie Mike. Hi, y'all. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hope you guys can hear me. We can hear you. There's a noise in the back, DJ. You are muted now, so I can't hear it. Wait, you can hear it right now? It's like a fan. Oh, okay. One second. Uh, Julio. All right. So before we get into actually what we're going to talk about, you guys can help me with these topics. Obviously, um, your opinion or your own. You don't have to share my opinion, so forth and so on. It is what it is. Cool. That being said, I want us to talk about Gail King for a second. And I'm going to put it on the screen. Because Gail King decided to go on the Pivot podcast. And if you guys remember, this is the same podcast that um, Simone Biles and Mr. Simone Biles went on and that whole debacle took place. So I'm not sure why Gail King (laughs) went there, but she definitely did. She's there, and they're asking her about relationship and how difficult it is to date and blah, blah, blah. Anywho, I want us to listen to what she said about dating, and then I want us to have a discussion. Um, Because I was on Patreon, and I heard Sin talking about it, and so I decided, you know what? I also would like to talk about this, so let's get into it. of success is owning your own plane <laughs> that that's when i think you're rich when you that i'm serious when you can own your own friggin plane yes. where you can go and come wherever you want to go but i'm doing all right i'm not you know i'm not going to sit here and act like oh no i'm struggling i'm not gonna i'm, I'm not that i'm, oh, doing, yeah. I'm and doing does okay it, does but it, what was your question i was gonna say that, is it does it, <laughs> is, it to say? is it difficult to date like with, with, well you know you what's difficult is that people say oh you're so intimidating now you've met me. Am I intimidating? Not at all. Room, am I at least? Am I intimidating? No, the answer. I'll go first. No, I'm not. <laughs> but somebody said to me once. They said, "Gail, look at your shoes." And I looked at my shoes. What's wrong with my shoes? Look at your bag. Look at your coat. Look at your uh, your friends with Oprah. You know, a guy looks at that and goes, "I can't compete with that." But my thing, it's not a matter of competing. It's not. I'm not looking for somebody to compete. You want somebody who has a sense of humor, who's very secure, who's not intimidated by whatever all of this is, that just sees you for you. You know, I went on a date and I was really excited, very uh, excited about it. We had gone out maybe two months and then he said he really needed to talk to me. Uh, He wanted to have a private conversation. Okay, sure. What is it? Do you think you could lend me $4,000? And I'm like, oh, God. (laughs) He jumped out with 4,000 out the gate? Though? I know. It's so he funny. didn't test oh, the water? You, you know what Oprah said? Oprah said, God, I would have felt better if he had said $40,000. <laughs> <laughs> he just went in your purse. Here you go. Here you go. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't carry cash. <laughs> but, he just <laughs> asked you to cash app him now. Huh? You just could have cash app him now. I know, guys, but I was so crushed because he, here's somebody who was making, you know, six figures, successful. And when I said, you know, could I ask what it's for? He said, yeah, it was for uh, a, a child support issue and to pay uh, a payment on some furniture. And Oprah op- goes, oh, God, this is just getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay. And he said, you know, this was Sunday. And he said, I promise I'll pay you back by Thursday. I promise I'll pay you by Thursday. Okay. But I wrote it. I wrote it because I thought hey, it, had, it had to be very difficult for him to ask me. And so I wrote it and I just figured that would be that, that would be that. And he did pay me back on Thursday, but I didn't feel the same. I I didn't feel the same. I didn't feel the same, but he did, you know, to his credit, pay me back on Thursday, but it just, it it just changed the relationship for me. It changed the relationship for me. Sorry, there's another part that I needed to get into. (laughs) Because, girl, first of all, the beauty on this panel Deserves more likes. Oh, hey, Alicia. Ah, now we are all it's full. The entire, all of us are here. I'm happy. Really? I'm so happy. Look at us. I, I don't know why I'm so happy, but I'm, <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I'm so sorry. 
Anywho, Gail King is deciding that she's going to lend loan $4,000 to a man she is just starting to date. We don't know how old this man is. We just know the man needed $4,000 for a child support issue and and furniture. <laughs> Sorry, this is not funny. People need things, but it's a weird kind of situation to go to the woman you're dating. You're not in a relationship or anything to go ask her for money. What say y'all before we get any further? Oh, vitamin, you don't you don't have much to say. <laughs> Your facial expressions were sending me. I feel like you have something to say. <laughs> Because when, when she said child support, like I knew child support, which, and I was just like, it would be child support. And I just don't understand how, how you feel comfortable. I'm going to just say as a man asking a woman like that, you're, you're not even in a relationship with this woman. You just, it sound like they just met, they're barely dating. Like, can you give me money to pay my child support? What precedent does that set moving forward? Okay, so that's what I was thinking. If this is true, which there's a big if, because y'all know I already don't believe this is real, right? But if this is true, do you think this is testing off a boundary? Because I feel like this is testing a boundary, and I don't think she should have said yes. I don't think it was testing. I think he was really hurting for that $4,000. Yeah. I think it's it testing him so much as I'm going to need you for this. That's why I'm saying, like, what precedent does it set moving forward? If you're doing something like that right off the bat, then that's letting me know that there will be more of this coming later so on down the line. About you to give someone you don't know. Like, does it mean you're a good person? Because she does seem, she's like, I gave it to him because it might. It, back it, up you're not listening. How did a man that is hurting for $4,000 go get on a date with Oprah's best friend? How did that happen to begin with? She's also Tyler Perry's friend. So. But wait, but wait, you're not, not listening because she said both her and her, her friend Oprah said, honestly, I would have felt a little bit better if it was $40,000. Basically, like if your bill, I would have felt better if you had at least bigger bills. Because then I know you're working with a bigger sum of money in a general sense. But for her, I feel like that was like $40. If that, it might have been more like $4 for her. So that's why she was just like, okay, but I'm looking at you different because I had to do this at all. But it's not a fair question to say, how does Gail end up on a date with someone who is broke because she's slamming it on this podcast too like let's be clear there's not many people of their caliber yeah 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 no me personally i do mm -hmm. think that it was a testing mm -hmm. of a boundary because not to say we don't know how much money he makes right we only know six figures mm -hmm. that can be a hundred thousand that can be 999 but in her definition she considered him successful what successful person yeah. do you know needs to borrow $4,000 for child support and furniture? Where's your credit card? And successful. why are you, why are you behind? Right. So, These so are recurring bills. These Someone are recurring bills. Not the child support. He could have been owing back child support. <laughs> um, also, um, what? A First of all. <laughs> a person who is successful in the spirit. Someone... Someone who's spiritually successful. Well, no, even. you know what? I was talking to my aunt earlier and she was talking about like some stuff for her business. And we both came to the same conclusion about what she was telling me of like, there are people who know people and they're in a certain proximity to these type of people that have a certain amount of money to give on a whim. And I'm not saying Gail was one of those people because she thought she was dating someone, you know, but I'm saying that there are people who aren't necessarily financially where other people are, but they have close enough proximity to be yeah. able to finagle a date with Gail King. 
<laughs> not finagle a date with Gail. He, he had to finagle a date because what? So do you think this is the... Mm, let me not leave. Because maybe Gail liked him. Maybe he is an attorney or just a, a, a quote-unquote respectable position. But when you start borrowing 4000 that says something about you. Especially... At least I, see, I think you get, got off me. Sorry. I think you... You're too polite to just interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was just going to say, I think um, it's very generous of her to, I guess, give what he's asking for. However, would I, I mean, I'm not Gail King. I don't know what it is to live her life and to have the money that she has. But in my but mind, to be, fair, to be mm -hmm. fair, she said that she's not rich because to be rich, you need to be able to buy a private jet. So being worth $40 million is not rich, but continue. Sorry. I that's should crazy. Make okay. Well, um, <laughs> that's rich to me. <laughs> we, we're just hobos out here. Exactly. But no, like I think, um, I think it doesn't, I think it puts her in an awkward place because what are you going to say? Right? Like, I, I think the issue was like him asking in the first place, like, why are you asking me, a woman that you're getting to know, for, to me, that's a lot of money. $4,000 might be like, she might wink at that, but for me, that's a lot of money. Um, and for the reasons why he needs money, says a lot about his character. And I feel like for me to know that you're behind $4,000, like if we're talking about child support, for example, like, yeah. that's a no. Like, just character alone is just no. Like, we're not, we're not going together. Like, you're not having your right part. You should not be on a date with me if you're $4,000 behind taking care of your kids. <laughs> but that's the thing, though. I'm with Oprah on this. If you ask for forty thousand dollars, then like I won't give it to you. But I can understand you in need of forty thousand dollars. You in need of four thousand dollars when I'm Gail King and you are supposed to be quote unquote successful. It's giving, not successful. <laughs> I'm not gonna say what it's giving, but it's more like a wannabe as opposed to something else. So it's like mm, no. He's either broke or has poor money management skills. Either way. Why is Gail King on a date with him? Go but there's no way she could know that if she's in a space where she's she is her and she's where she is, right? So I don't feel like it's wrong to assume once you've been able to put yourself in certain places in proximity to certain people, i.e. Oprah and Tyler Perry, that the people around you would be of the same caliber or higher. And so for her we don't know what she saw, you know, who he presented himself to be, but I'm pretty sure she felt safe in assuming that whatever she got, he had to have. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, that makes and sense. And then I say, ladies, get background checks, period. Per Agreed. Google. But also, <laughs> after, after you request the, the $4,000, she said her mind changed. My thing is, why did you give... Yeah. Okay, she might just be a sweet person then because she did yeah. give it to him. And the explanation is like, it must have been so difficult for him to come and ask me. Gail don't know these men apparently. Yeah. It's, not, it's not that difficult. <laughs> it was the easiest 4000 he ever made. It was these, not hard. These people do not have a lot, but they will have audacity. That is one thing they're not lacking. So I don't think it was difficult. Um he she said he gave it back to her um whatever you believe about gail king here i don't whatever but there is another part to this interview that gave me the ick um and i'm about to play it now uh unless you guys wanted to add something more all right let's get back into it so in answer to your question is it difficult to date yes i think so because I really am attracted to uh, men of color. I just am. I love how a black man says mother baby. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> says it like y'all. Right, like, and not, I know you'll beep it out. I know I you'll beep really, it out. I don't really say it well, huh? <laughs> you know, he doesn't cuss good at all, Gail. I, every time he cusses, I'll be like, you making us look better. No, 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 it's just the way that it's said. I don't even know how to explain it to you. Like, how does, before we even get to clarifying what she's talking about, which she's about to clarify, I can now see how she ended up on that date. I'm sorry. Like, I, I fully understand how she ended up on that date with that man. Like, before, we might have been like, maybe she, like, her friend group will vet for her so she doesn't feel like she needed to vet. But a statement like this, 
explains fully how she ended up on that date. I'm sorry, gay. I love you, girl, period. But, like, I see how you ended up on that date. Wait, hold on. We should specify, though, that we can't say that she ended up on this date. She said they were two months into dating. So we don't know what took place between them officially starting and then. So I know somebody asked in the, in the comment section whether or not she has slept with him, which probably, probably not. Uh, but, you know, this... <laughs> Yeah, I, I just agree with what you said. Him being Black, first and foremost, already put him in the running. Him being successful in his own right, not necessarily relative to her, but on his own. Like, that well, was she, enough, she, like okay, success, let's see where this goes. No, 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 no. Success is not a qualification. She did say success. She, To be clear, she, again, is friends with Tyler Perry, so she's not about to come out here and say, y'all need to be successful. Instead, she said... The, she's going to explain what she said, what it is that attracts her to this man, these two men. How do they say it? I can't, I can't do it. I like, can't do that's it. my motherfucking baby? No, no, no. When they call yeah. you baby, like, oh, hey, baby. Like, hey, baby. Yeah, I love how they say, hey, baby. Tanks, it's what's, two, your, it's, what's your hey, baby? It's no. two separate things. It's not my baby. It's two separate things. God. I love how they say, hey, baby, how you doing? Ah. It's different. It is different. And then how they just say, it could be a term of endearment. <laughs> It could Thank be a, you. It could be a term of endearment, yeah. or it could be I'm really pissed. Yeah. But there's something about the black, a black man says it. I'm just I'm attracted to that. They gotta have something else too, though. Yeah, I'm about to say, I can cuss Gail. If you want me to cuss, I cuss all day. For you. <laughs> no, you don't want somebody with a potty mouth, Channing. It's not that. It's not that. But sometimes a well uh, delivered curse word. Is is very intelligent to me. You might want to go to Channing's uh, stand up. He just started stand up, and he has this one skit about terms of endearment. Yeah, yeah. Every cuss word you can be said nice or mean. Uh huh. Even bitch is a bad word. Like you nobody wants to be called it a is bitch. A bad word, yes. But if you say it certain, <laughs> bitch over here, ha ha. ha. <laughs> you like raggedy that. bitch. There's two different things. Two different things. No, I don't like this bitch over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh Gail. Go ahead, Alicia. I I am so confused because <laughs> who she portrays herself to be, she's she's very good, very good uh, I guess, in my mind, when I see her on publications, when I see her on TV, this is not who I think that she is. But this also <laughs> gives me insight to who Oprah might be. But anyway, but I think um I think Gail, the bar is so low. Like like what what attracts you to okay what attracts you to black men is the way that they cuss and them saying hey baby and so for me it's like okay like if this is if this is all it takes for you to be taken with somebody then i honestly don't know I what have to a say. question i have a question that leads me to like some really interesting questions what do you think? Because you said specifically, like, this is not what you think Gail is. So what would you say Gail has purposefully presented herself as, as opposed to she just was there and we assumed? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I think I, I assumed. <laughs> no, but I, I don't actually believe this is what I think Gail is pandering right now. I think Gail is out here chucking and jiving for these men. I don't. I, I don't. Believe... <laughs> I mean, and you're listening. I'm with you. <clears throat> Gail is classic. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think she's pandering. I think she's being very serious because it would at least agree with her decision to go on their podcast. So you think Gail went on a date with a man? who asked her for $4,000 for child support and to, for furnitures. You think that happened? Yes. Is it her success that we're saying disagrees with this? Because that's the case for quite a few successful Black women. Girl, the way Steven, Black men have been dragging Gail said, King and Oprah Winfrey... Oh, go ahead. You've said millions of times on here that you have friends who are very well off who live very posh lifestyles, who do not need that type of rah-rah. And they're going and they're looking and they're begging for the rah-rah. You've said that so many times. Why is this surprising to you? 
Because I don't believe Gail. G- G- First of all, I think Gail and Oprah. Because she's Gail King. How are you doing, Gail? <laughs> 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 yeah, no. Wait, so you think she's manufacturing a common straight black woman struggle to try to divert attention from Because what is the reason is out there dating man, black man? I'm I think she's tried. How long have Gail known Oprah? A lifetime. Well, a lifetime ago, she is not dating men. Allegedly. 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 They have, <laughs> they have cool. enough money. They have enough money, and we see so little of them. They could be doing anything. I really, I will say this, and this might be just my projection. I don't feel like they have to lie to anybody about anything. Between their uh, age, between the money, between just them just having been doing whatever for so long. They ain't got a lot of nobody. Who going to check them? Because I think that's why I was asking, like, what is what is the end goal here? Like, I'm surprised, as everybody else, that Gail is on this podcast at all. But, like, what I is... Think, I think our auntie just doesn't know. I think our auntie... Je- or it, who, oh, that was Ava DuVernay. I think our auntie just was like, oh, these youngsters want me on their show? Oh, okay. So and she just she went on the, the show. You don't think she saw the Simone Biles show? You don't think after they approached her, she looked them up? I'm sure that... No, not I'm sure. My question is, she saw that and still wanted to go? That is a question that I have. But in a general sense, my viewpoint of a Gail King is just that she's just like, oh, okay, they want to talk to me. Why would they want? Oh, like a novelty. It's a novelty to her in my mind. Right. Gail is giving witness, Bobby. I love you. <laughs> uh, since y'all up there, I can be wild. No, you cannot, boy. Uh, but- <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being a member for eight months. That's pretty spectacular. Right? Uh, it's giving Whitney a period. <laughs> <laughs> I think Gail is on the show to expand her audience. Not to... Ex- All right, girl, period. And That's one more. Po- that is possible. She is still on the morning show. You know, I don't remember which one she works at. But she is still on the morning show. So she might be doing it to stay, you know, marketable or just bring new blood over there because I doubt they would fire her. She probably going to die in that position. But yeah. why are you uh, laughing? Uh, uh, that does it for me. <laughs> Period. Um, thank you, <laughs> Mr. Sprinkles. Uh, all right. So you all believe that Gail went out with this man and this man asked her for money specifically for child support and furniture. Y'all, y'all believe that happened. That's what I'm You hearing. act like she didn't say yeah. that it turned her off. No, you no, I'm asking you all believe this a successful six figure man went out with Gail King and asked her for four thousand dollars. Yes, mm-hmm. but it's because I believe that it was a test. At the end of the day, she made way more money than him, even though he was, again, a, in her mind, accomplished in his own right. I think this was a test. All right. Now, quick question before we move on, though. She said she saw him differently. Did she say she stopped dating him? She definitely didn't say that, and none of them asked because these people aren't... Um, get, let me not. I think it's a hard thing. And like being up here pretending like, oh my God, you should know how to do this and how to do that every second is probably wrong. And I should give more grace to a lot more people. But a question I would ask is that, so what do you mean you saw him differently? Like, I'm going to ask. You're going to explain that. But these people, don't, I don't know. I, I just feel like the interviewing is a lot, lot lost art. I guess. I guess that's why I'm like, even I understand, I guess, like wanting to have her on there, like, oh, it's Gail King. But it's like, does Gail King have people working for her that book her things for her? And if so, did they think this was good for her brand? And then did she think telling that story was going to be good for the podcast? You know what I mean? Like, 
which which makes me wonder, like maybe she does know, maybe she did know before she went on there what she was getting into. I don't know. Because why would you, I've never seen her share herself like this. And I guess I'm just wondering why now the change or now yeah. sharing that. Not only that, she went I on the like we're talking and everything. Girl want to write her she name. She has down. to be pandering. She has to be. I agree. Because it doesn't make any sense. She won't say, I'm just like you, Gail. You're worth $40 million. No, you're not. Your best friend is Oprah. Like, BFFR. Like, you literally talk about um, having an issue calling my Angelou. In the same podcast, girl, we are not the same. <laughs> right. You are that girl, period. Just I don't... to clarify, I think that she was pandering throughout the interview, but I just, I don't think she lied about that, <laughs> about giving him the 4000 That's where I stand. I mean, it's, I mean, I don't know. And I, um, I'm going to trust y'all's intuition on this, that she was out with this man and that this man, after a couple of dates, decided that this is the time to ask for money from Gail King, who has a TV show. <laughs> Just, but we still don't everything. know technically when this date happened. This could have happened in like 9-3. Who knows? Well, I think it happened recently enough for her name to matter. Because she kept talking about, sense. is it difficult to date as Gail King? So that question implies that she was the Gail King while she was dating this person. Look, but it might have been I said before, like, there's Gail King, the person, and then there's Gail King, Oprah's friend. And, like, that like doesn't mean... Yeah, so it's like we can, can we can feel yeah. however we feel about this this icon or whatever we see her as and see her as oh up here and she shouldn't be going through this and, and she you know she can fly. You know what I mean? Like we see her as this particular type of entity, but she is a human being. And not only is she a human being, she is a black woman that's well to do that's of a certain age and we talk all the time about the stuff that women women not gail king but women like her are going through in her position are going through so she it sounds like she's not exempt that we see no, her a certain way doesn't immediately mean she sees herself that way yeah simone biles i mean she sees simone biles oh mm -hmm. yeah i mean this and is even at that um Even with that, I was saying, like, we can't speak to what she values in her life. And she may value companionship, not so much to the point where, like, she didn't marry that guy. He, he doesn't sound like he's still around. But for her to be willing to try to, like, go through the process of dating guys and evaluating, you know, what her deal breakers are or trying to figure out where people are coming from when they do things that are disappointing. Like she, again, she's a person. So you're going to have to go through that trial and error when you're trying to find companionship or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I think Alicia did a video on this and I think if you all haven't seen this video, um, you should definitely go watch it. I forgot the title of your video, Alicia, but you were talking about the need for community and companionship and uh, not to be ashamed of that. Uh, but also from the broader perspective, protect yourself in searching for it. So don't give $4,000 to a man you don't know. Mm. I, I sincerely doubt she put herself in a position to like not pay her own light bill or something. Oh no, I don't care about that. I do not care about <laughs> <laughs> that in relation to how much you actually have. Don't give men money you don't know. <laughs> All right. As we're talking about uh, women protecting men um, and, and pandering to men, Tiana Taylor. So Tiana Taylor filed for divorce <laughs> from her husband. Uh, um, and I mean, look, whatever you want to say about Tiana, um, 
anyway, so she filed for divorce and she wanted to keep this a secret. Um, and so she didn't use their real name. She used their initials. Her husband um, then filed something with the court and uh, TMZ did not release the full filing. So that's unfortunate and I'm not paying for it and I don't care enough to look into it. Um, this is a private matter. But anyway, he filed and released their full name. And in the the, the sort of filing for the divorce, Tiana is outlining really disgusting behaviors in my mind, like shutting off the utility um, when he moved out, not finishing working on the house and leaving that to Tiana, um, kind of what I described as mental abuse um, and disrespect because he did not like that she's working and more famous than him. Also, child neglect in my book where um, instead of taking the children with him in his car, he wanted to smoke, allegedly, and so he got a different car for the kids, um, which is kind of a security risk when you're that famous. Um, anywho, all of this information is being exposed by TMZ, and Tiana comes out and is defending her husband, saying that he is a good man, he is a good dad, leave him alone. And the interesting question I have here is, and we talked a little bit about this earlier, is she right for wanting to defend her husband, um, even though they're going through a divorce, to the extent that she will lie about his image? And who no. cares? No, and no. Is there a yes? She's right. I said yes. All right, girl. I, tell us. Let me warn the chat. You do not have the right to disrespect anyone on the screen. Moderators, please time out. Do not block anyone today. Well, depending on what Listen. they say. Time out, people. All right, go ahead. <laughs> As I told you earlier, you know, I keep a real tame on your show because I, I have lots of respect for you. Um, oh, yeah. So if we were over on mine, though, I mean, I'd allow it. But, you know, it's your chat. <laughs> I said yes, only because of the children and because of their celebrity. Um, I'm not saying that it is right to lie to your children. What I am saying is I understand why she did it. Would it have been better for her to just not say anything? Absolutely. But, you know, I just empathize with her a lot in this situation only for this particular incident now continuing lying to your children are lying about this man and his image no but based on this particular instance with these particular sets of facts i i am extending grace to her and and some understanding and empathy all right so you don't see a problem, or do you see a problem, but you are extending empathy and grace? I see a problem, and I'm extending empathy and grace. All right. Does anyone have a response? I level up. You think yeah, you seem to be shaking your head in agreement. No, I was, everything you saw, that was about me not playing anymore. Bloop. Uh-oh. The Lord said you and no <laughs> the, Lord said, no. the Lord said we shall not have this. Um, DJ, what is your response to this? My response is completely understand why you would want to prioritize the children. No issues there, right? If that was her driving force, then I could extend that same level of grace and empathy that, that you are, Coco. My thing is her initial moves did exactly what you were talking about. Um, I, what, what was it? Was it initials or pseudonyms? Initials. Not using initials, not using their full names. She tried to keep it confidential. He then thwarted all of her efforts. Once that happens, whatever comes after that point is on him. So as much as I understand, and, and this is, um, of course, an extension of the conversation we're having earlier, I get wanting to put the child for, first, but I just can't get behind the idea of 
I, I don't even consider this putting the child first, if I'm being honest with you. I don't because she tried to do the right thing, even though she wasn't in she wasn't obligated to. And he still thwarted all of her efforts. And so now, OK, now it's all out there. If Junie or the other child, I'm sorry, I don't remember their name. If they do end up seeing this on, on the Internet and everything like that, this will all be because of Iman. All, it will all be because of him. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Thank you, Tuels. But no, so it's like, I get, maybe I'm not a parent. Let me just make that very clear. So maybe that's why I'm able to see this so black and white. I just don't see how this is for the children's benefit. I see how it's for his. I don't see how it's for the children's benefit. All right, go ahead, Alicia. Um, yeah, I, I understand even if she was doing this for her benefit. I understand why she would do that because we already see how people talk about single mothers, right? And then if you if you were honest, and if women who are mothers of children who their fathers choose, who their fathers choose not to be in their or their kids' lives, how they're dragged, right? Oh, she's bitter. Oh, she's just mad because X, Y, and Z. People create these narratives. And I think, I think that oh, Chica, I think that um, I think that Tiana was trying to avoid being called bitter or being called angry or whatever else, like to, to avoid being dragged. And also she has helped drag other people. She has helped like talk down on other black women. And so now she's at this place where it's like, oh, I'm where these other people were, you know, that I, that I made fun of, or that I added to the, you know, added fuel to the fire, so to speak. And now I have to eat crow or I got to humble myself. And it's hard. It's it, like, I think that she wanted to present herself to be like, Oh, it's not even like that. We're best friends. You know what I'm saying? Like we're we're buddy buddy. But you know, now that the truth is out, it's kind of like, okay, well, it's not, it's not as buddy buddy as it was. And it's just like, oh, you're just like, and I say this as people, you're just like all the rest of us. You know what I mean? Like you're not, it's not special. You're just like everybody else, you know. So yeah. And I think it's the, that's where I have the problem. It feels like she was doing the I'm not like other girls thing, which we'll get to in a moment, where we're fine. Everything is good. It's great. We It's a convivial atmosphere, girl. We got this. But in your filing, though, that filing to the court is saying something very different, right? You're talking about neglect in not the legal term of art, but in a way where you're the man doesn't show up for his child and would prefer to smoke. So leave his child in a different Uber somewhere outside of his protection of a man who will not pay the bills for utilities and will let it shut off and you have to take that on, right? Someone who is jealous of you and your success. That is the image you painted, true or not. So for you to be doing that on a legal document while simultaneously out here saying, oh, he is a good man, Savannah, it feels like you're trying to flex on people and I don't like it. Also, even if you're not, this creates an environment where men get to behave poorly and women cover up for the bad behavior in the name of the children or in whatever name that is. And I don't think that is right going forward. I also don't think it's right to lie to children. Now, I will say DJ has softened me in like one conversation on this where I was like, girl, your dad didn't want you or your dad left. Is he coming back? Oh, I babies. don't know. I love you, though, but I don't know what. But DJ said, yeah, no, probably talk to it. It's age appropriate. Figure out what the child needs or try to meet it, but don't lie to them. Or you can just not talk about it. I think that's a better approach because my approach is like, girl, um, we can go to your dad and figure out if he wants you. He don't. All right, girl, come back. Don't ask me about him ever again. Right? And that's why God decided I'm not a woman. God said you are a man because I would never. So I I don't think it's right to lie to kids that way. Um, level up, I think you were going. I when it comes to what she did, I can see how the oh no. <laughs> Thema said trauma for the truth I feel like you should build your um, I th this is the thing and this is wrong by the way my approach I think DJ is correct and I'm wrong let me put that out there um, 
But I think one of the problems we have is that we are building people's self-esteem off of delusion, right? It is not your responsibility to do what the man was supposed to do or what the woman was supposed to do. The person who mm -hmm. left, left you with your child to love them the best way you can. It is not to love them and pretend like the person who left to love them, right? Your duty is not his or to make his image clean. It's not that, it can't be that. And that is going to have an impact on your child and probably the self-esteem of your child. It is what it is, and they're going to have to work through that. Lying to them, I feel like, only compounds that kind of trauma. It only compounds the issues that will pop up later when they find out that, wait, I thought you said daddy loved me and that I could go over with daddy and he would be back. Now I'm 18 and I'm trying to reach out to him and he doesn't want me. So you're a liar, he doesn't want me. Now I'm having to deal with all of these issues right now. I don't believe in lying to kids, but I also recognize that, yes, DJ, you are correct in that you cannot just tell them exactly what is happening in the Roy sense. You have to tailor it to the child and their age and all of that. So then poor you. kids. Let's lean into the delusion conversation. But before and there was a comment in the chat asking if lawyers fabricate and dramatize things and pleadings. No, that's unethical. But that being said, I did agree. Like, I think that's when we were having the discussion, that's where I had landed on of why I empathize and understand because my mother was the same. And to put it in the simplest terms and not to be so highfalutin about it, it can only be delusion. Right? Because if your children are in a home experiencing things with their own eyes, and then out of your mouth, you're you're contradicting what they're seeing with their eyes. Right? Like going back to the like you were saying, my daddy, your daddy don't want you. Obviously, if your dad tells you, Oh, I'm coming this weekend, I'm coming this weekend, and he never shows up, of course he doesn't love you. He may think he loves you, but he's not acting like it. So even without her saying anything negative, I don't know. It's it's confusing to the children, but I also understand why she did it because it it's delusion. People that are delusional are not rational. So oh, I mean, well, I have a problem with Tiana separately. I was speaking, and I think we were all speaking generally in terms of how you yeah. approach this kind of conversation. Oh, I have a problem with Tiana coming out and volunteering lies. <laughs> Tiana, girl, ain't nobody asked you to lie. We didn't ask you about your personal situation. Your husband put it out. She wrote a post, and I don't have this post, and I should have had it. This long, long thesis, dissertation, talking about P I wanted to keep this private, but people keep putting it out there and people, people, people. The people is your husband. It is singular. It is your husband that made it known that you and her, you and him were, were filing for a divorce or whatever. He's the one who put it out there, not people. So if you're mad, take it out at your husband who made it public. Because he don't seem to care about privacy the way that you do. So that sounds like a conversation for you and him, not dragging us. We didn't do anything. Why are you volunteering? I hate when people volunteer lies to me. Like if I came to you and asked you a question and you lied to me, I'm mad. But if I'm just minding my business and you're just volunteering lie, oh, he's a good man, girl, we didn't ask. Because you keep wanting to flex these dusty marriages and I don't know why. I don't know why people mm. keep trying to force their marriages down other people's throat. If it's that good, you wouldn't be talking about it so much. We don't care. Well, I will say as we're, as I'm thinking, you know, processing, getting new information, you know, I'm wondering because the initial filing alleged various types of abuse. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering because before this, they were very on code, very on brand. So I'm wondering if that was his last ditch effort of control and pushing her buttons. Because how dare you file? Because you, like we said, 
there were no names. So no one would have been the wiser. But how dare you try to actually leave me? How dare you think you are good enough to live life without me? How dare you take my children? So F you, I'm not paying this. I'm not doing that. And I'm going to publicly embarrass you. Mm-hmm. And not only embarrass you. And she is a part of kids. that cycle, which, you know, okay. my parents were in the same DV cycle, that there's something that if I just... If I just say everything's okay, if I just paint this picture, everything will be okay. If I do the things that don't stress him enough, maybe he'll stop. He won't, but that's the justification of, you know, just being traumatized. And so, I mean, I guess that's part of the reason why, too, I, I, I get it. Is it right? No, you should leave and you should be protected. And your children definitely do not need to be in that situation. And you do not need to contribute to this cycle. But I understand when you're in it and you're going through the cycle, they're just not, she's just not seeing it like that. And I see that with a lot of women in practicing um, divorce law. Like it, it, when you're in it, you're in it. And then once it, you click and it's like, oh, this is not normal. This is not safe. Then they make the moves, and then that's when husbands get scary. Yeah. So I mean, I can I don't know too much about their situation, but it's kind of given. I want to control the narrative so bad, and I'm gonna do whatever I want. And she's the cleanup person because she's always been the cleanup person. And she's continuing. I'm like, to stop do. being the cleanup person. You know. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I'll say I, this. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No. No, I was just going to say that if, if that is the case, then even more grace and sympathy, I would extend her way. Let me just make that very clear. But I think, um, and because I'm reading the comments as well, and this is actually is something that I didn't really think about fully, which is that she knew for a while that her marriage was raggedy, but didn't want to be, <laughs> didn't want to come out and say it specifically because I believe too many women, they feel like their man's exploits is like, a reflection of them. And so it's almost like, if you were to be honest about him being trash, I wouldn't look at you and, and say, you know, well, what are you doing wrong? Or like, oh, well, you should have picked better. I know that's happening on a greater scale. And I think that's the issue that so many women feel like they have to lie about their relationships because if they don't, people are not going to look at him for his bad behavior. They're going to look at her for allowing it. So that could be well, the case. Well, what she's lacking to cause him to be out there running amok, which is a problem. However, I don't think this is fully true. I think it is true. <clears throat> but I think, I think Sin probably um, changed, <laughs> affected me in this way. I think a lot of women want to flex on other women with their marriages. And so they lie about how good their marriages are to flex on other people. Um, I feel like if a lot of people were being honest about these raggedy marriages, then um, people would know that they're raggedy and you can't flex with a raggedy marriage. Because, I mean, to the, the point where we have Nicki Minaj talking about she got good, you know what, and you can't keep a man, Megan, while she's dating um, Tebow from across the street. I don't know what it is that like the people expect. So I feel like people just lie about their marriages um, to flex, specifically to flex. I also think they're scared. I don't know. I, th I think that there's a lot of, there is a lot of pressure, I think, for women to perform in marriages and like to keep your husband, you know, I don't know, focused on you as opposed to the world around them. But I also think that, I think that we have been programmed, women have been programmed for a lot of us since birth or since childhood See, like this is the status of like acceptance and like oh this is this is uh security this is love this is all the things this is what you want and so yeah like if you're honest with your friends about like your husband being trash they probably gonna tell you to leave right they're probably gonna they're probably gonna tell you the truth and i think that a lot of women are afraid i think i think that a lot of women are afraid of one be looking silly like being the one like this girl don't never leave all she do is talk about her her man and don't like nobody wants to be that person right so like you're afraid to you're afraid to be honest you're afraid of other people looking at your spouse and seeing your spouse as this awful person like you're afraid of outing them you're also afraid if you love your spouse you're also afraid of their image being marred and their image being like you know 
messed up because of something they did. And I think that a lot of women, whether it be to protect the kids or to protect themselves or their spouse, they throw themselves out in front of this person who is literally destroying their own life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't take you. <laughs> but, but like they're destroying, they're destroying their life, right? And you throwing yourself in front of them is destroying, is is you destroying yourself for them, for a person who literally doesn't care. Or I won't say don't care, for a person who is destructive, I'll say. Yeah. So yeah, either way, for whatever reason, the woman is the one who loses in the end anyway. I mean, and the kids, but also. And I'll you know, also me. add to the fear component that when there are brave women that step forward and seek help, the vast majority of those women do not get help. Whether it be there are no resources, whether it be they not, they don't believe, or whether they believe, you know, they're just male identified and agree with the man, like, people will literally get almost unalived by their partners. And, and their own parents will tell them, well, honey, you know you married them. So be a, be a good woman, be a good wife, be a good Christian, and go back home and make it work. That's literally where I was going next, the Christian, Christianity. Now, my religion, love it, very useful. There's only one true God. Don't at me at yourself. Um, the church, however, plays this really terrible, terrible role in keeping women tied down to men who are mistreating them. And there's this sense that you need to endure and endure and endure. And the more you endure, the the more God favors you apparently. And the more um, you're expected to take on it, the stronger you are in the eyes of God and the more faithful to the Bible you become. And when your man cheats, you go and you pray for him and you fast for him and you rub holy water on his head while he sleep and holy oil, girl. And then to the man, the man just turned to you and say, girl, I'm fighting the, 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 the spirit of cheating. I'm fighting the spirit of homosexuality. I'm fighting the spirit of theft. I'm fighting the spirit of abuse. So like, keep praying the spirit away. I'll continue to do what I'm doing, but you just keep praying and we'll get the demon out of me. And that creates um, this kind of mentality that like women expect to be abused and mistreated and then also continue to cover for the man because the man is somehow just a victim of some spiritual war and you need to pray him out of it. That is a problem. That is a problem. I agree. And um and to that I I I agree and I th- and I like what you said about like suffering long, right? Like being long suffering is like one of the like you have to be a long suffering person. Well, who decides? Like there's there's an artist um her name's Zara and she's she's a Christian artist. But like one of the things that she says is like who says what's long enough? Like who gets to decide what is long? You know what I mean? And and a lot of us are taught to suffer long, like to death. And it's like, no, I mean, and not to get like super religious or whatever, but at some point it becomes like, for me, like idolizing somebody or idolizing Mm -hmm. something, right? If I'm willing to die for something, that means that I'm idolizing that thing, which is literally against all things Christian. So like something is not adding up. So at some point you have to interrogate it to be like, okay, who is, who is this messaging coming from? And for what reason, who benefits from this? And why am I, why do I believe this thing? And I think that a lot of women, if they were really honest, would God want you to stay in a marriage suffering and, you know, not having what you need? And like, if God is supposed to represent, okay, let's, let, okay, we'll go there. If God is supposed to represent, if, excuse me, if your husband is supposed to represent Christ coming back for the bride, right? And the woman is supposed to be the bride. Does Christ abuse Christ's bride, does Christ not feed? Like you see the exact opposite. And so if your if your husband is not reflecting who Christ is, my question is like, is that your husband? Like, I mean, not is that your husband as in like yeah. whatever, but like he's not playing the role. So in my mind, you have all permission to leave because somebody's not holding up their end of the bargain. <laughs> so like yeah. you know what I, I mean? I, I agree with you. And I feel like there is this I have watched the church council people, women, into sticking with the men. And the 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 counsel for the man is not the same. And like I've seen women 
form circle around a woman with a cheating husband, touching her and praying for her girl. And I'm just there laughing because this don't make no sense. Like, it does not make any sense that you all are sitting there praying for this woman, embarrassing her with a philandering husband while the husband is out there cheating, girl. What? That don't make sense. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I guess it's because praying to God and hoping he does something, it makes more sense or it's more likely to enact change than the guy just doing better. Yeah. Girl, faith without works is useless. So, like, if, if you go, all you're going to do is pray. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> pray while you're filing these divorce papers. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, fast while you're going through the divorce process. Ain't nobody got time to be sitting here praying while nobody, no one's changing. What, what incentives incentive would there be for this man to change when he's getting all the benefits of the relationship and cheating while you are out there praying? Girl, all I'm going to do is come home and say, oh, you prayed. I am so sorry. I'm fighting demons. Girl, I love you. I love you. Two weeks later, same thing, girl. This demon is strong. <laughs> We're going to need an exorcist, girl. You're going to have to pray two times. You're going to have to fast for two more weeks. Because we go, we have to exercise this demon and then do it again. Cause ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody like. There's no incentives for him to change. Like, what do you mean? And and that's the thing, right? Like within within a Christian context or spiritual context, period. You can you get you get to blame demons. Whole time is you. It ain't yeah. no demon. It's you. <laughs> like you want it. <laughs> Girl, this, these women in the church with their men sleeping with the boy, the, not the boy, sorry, the men in the church. Well, well, actually. <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't have corrected that. Talking about the spirit of homosexuality. Girl, all right, I'm going to move on because then nobody got time for all this foolishness. Edit long. Hashtag edit long. Sorry. Uh, it is what it is. Let's move on. I'm going to move on. Because <laughs> I feel like a drag is coming on and I do not want it. I do not want it because I, I have things to do. Hmm. So you guys remember the, um, this is the last one before we get into, we actually haven't gotten into the topic that really, <laughs> this is actually, this is actually You kind always of be funny. playing us, you be like, we won't get into the topic and be 10 o'clock at night getting into the main <laughs> topic of the video. Then I'm having fun with y'all, period. Um, so y'all remember Courtney Klenner's, um, the, the. OnlyFans model who um, unalived her boyfriend. You remember that story out of Florida? No? Um, yes. So there was an, yeah, all right. Well, I'm not here because I decided I wouldn't cover the story in any depth. Um, Christian Oban Sally, I think the guy name was, and he disparaged black women um, a while ago on his Twitter, and he found his, the white lady there together. The lady does OnlyFans. Apparently, the lady was very abusive to him and ultimately unalived him. Um, she's on trial for that, so we don't know yet uh, if it was self-defense. Um, but yeah, apparently there was, um, and this came from Sin, but um, TMZ reported that her parents got arrested because they were trying to allegedly um, hide evidence from the police um, in the form of his computer. And I'm assuming that his computer had further information that this woman, Courtney, was very abusive to this man. And uh, we don't know what's on there. But the apple apparently don't fall far from the tree. And this is a problem, I think, circling back to Iman. I think this is the problem. When you have someone in your life that you claim to love, you cannot shield them from the consequence of their actions always. There is something called accountability. And I'm not blaming the parents for how this young lady turned out. But... The fact that these mother and father are facing charges for tampering with evidence when your daughter is on a murder trial feels like there is a direct correlation in how you raise your daughter and how she come up unaliving people. Like it be the fact the point at which you as a parent start hiding evidence that your 
daughter might be a murderer is a problem. <laughs> like, like, allegedly. Like, this is a problem. Because, like, I'm trying to think if I was accused of this, my mom would be like, I love you, but th- you got this on your own. Ain't nobody getting involved. That you, that you are hiding evidence is a problem. And it, it for me, I usually don't blame parents for adults because when you're an adult you need to work on your own thing but it i feel like there's a direct connection with the way you raise your child and them becoming a murderer allegedly if you are willing as a parent while they're on trial to be tampering with evidence and hiding evidence from the court i don't know it just feels like the the parenting directly relates to the the, the, the the murderer, allegedly. I mean, that, that's my only opinion. Y'all can talk about it, because I have nothing else to say. And we can move on. God is, God is working on me, so rest in peace to this man. <laughs> you know, sad story. Yeah. And we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be that person, but I feel like the men's that was, you know, telling us to get our tiki torches and our bonnets and go down to uh, Miami and protest and such. I feel like they should be real excited and throw a party. They finally got the justice they didn't work for. So, <laughs> um, by the way, on the poll, did this happen to Gail? Apparently, seventy-seven percent of the audience believe that this did in fact happen to Gail King. So people here believe that that, that someone went out with Gail and asked her for $4,000 for child support and um, to pay for child support and, and, and furniture. <laughs> I can't. I cannot. All right. So now we are at our actual topic. So Melissa Ford, once upon a time, was a video vixen. And she came out um, a while ago to um, go against, in some people's mind, um, what's her name? Karen Stephens, Superhead, they call a moniker or whatever. Um, and we're going to watch a video regarding what Melissa had to say about um, Karen. Karen, if you guys don't remember, wrote a book about what happened to her in the industry and what she did. And she, she was very explicit. I read this book a long, long, long time ago. And Melissa came out and said some things. We're going to watch a coverage kind of of it. And then we're going to discuss whether or not this is right. And we're going to try to break it down in very specific ways. Um, and whether or not Melissa is, quote unquote, a pick me um, based on this. And we'll extend the conversation and then we'll open the panel. All right, let's do it. Ready? Are we all ready? If we're not all ready, I can sing until we are ready. <laughs> DJ is ready. I'm ready. All right. Promiscuous like her. No, it was their job to be sexy. She's basically talking about everything that goes on behind closed doors. That's why they're behind closed doors. That last clip is basically a gigantic seal of verification that Corinne's horrific experiences were the truth. These quotes demonstrate the misogyny she faced from men, but the pushback from her fellow video vixens was also fierce. Many were eager to emphasize that while they shared the same widely criticized and maligned job as Corinne, they were not addicts, not sex workers, and not promiscuous like her. So it was their job to be sexy, elicit sexual arousal and responses from men for money, and wear little to no clothing, protecting a sense of morality was important, especially in the super slut shamey 2000s climate. I can't believe I personally survived. Said Melissa Ford, I was raised with a certain moral and value system. I was always vocal about my representation. If there was a role that seemed salacious, I would work to get it redone. I was never the good time girl on set. Melissa further elaborated on Stephen saying, she has a sense of ownership of who she is. She has no problem admitting she's a whore. Statements like these are often found in other areas of sex work. Think sugar babies who look down on escorts and strippers who look down on cam girls. All right. 
So that's where we will start. Um, Karen, Miss Steffens, uh, a video girl who talks about who, what she's done and all of that. Um, and then we have Melissa Ford, also um, a, vi- a video vixen is a term, right? Yeah. A video vixen comes out and say, girl, that's her. I was raised with morals. I never done that. It is what it is. Um, she has no problem admitting she's an H. Is Melissa Ford wrong and why? I think it's very important. Well, I, 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 I think the question, is she wrong? We're appealing to morality, are we not? Or should we make a further distinction? Well, is she wrong for what she did is a question of, did what was what she did good for her individually, good for Karen separately, and good for, I guess, the collective of women, I guess, men and society more broadly? Mm-hmm. I think, yes, it's a moral question. Okay. Morally, I think I found it disgusting. The reason why I wanted to specify is because I understand the why behind her saying what she said does not necessarily mean I agree with it or I would do the same thing if I was in her position. I feel like not only was this bad for Corinne and that Corinne was already being piled on, she was letting people behind the curtain, or let me say this, the perception of what Corinne did by writing that book is that she was showing people behind the curtain of the normal life of a video vixen, right? That was the perception. The issue though, and that's what um, that's what I believe intellectual media also included in her video, Corinne specified, this was my experience. This is not the typical experience for a video vixen. A lot of the women that I came across are, were very modest. They, I'm sorry, did you want to chime in? Yeah, because I, I remember reading the book and feeling like she was speaking about what happens generally. Like she was mm-hmm. detailing her specific um, incident, but it felt more general. Um, but okay. I could be wrong, so go ahead. I well, I'll say this. this. Whether or not that's like the typical experience, we'll never really know, right? I wouldn't be surprised either way because I know what coercion feels like. And a lot of the women watching knows what that feels like too. And yeah. the reality is not enough of us are strong enough in order to ward that off. So that could very well be true, but I'll move on because I didn't read the book myself. But, but wait, uh, you used mm-hmm. the word disgusting, I believe, like yes. what she did. Why? why? Thank what you, I, Ms. Mona. Ms. Mona. The reason why I found it disgusting is that I believe there is a difference between othering yourself and putting a person down. There's a difference between making a distinction between yourself and another person and, you know, talking down upon that person so that you could, uh, relative to her, be elevated. And I believe the latter is what uh, Melissa Ford did. I would never want a woman to admit quote, unquote, admit to something that she doesn't do in order to have solidarity with someone else. That wouldn't make sense, right? Right. So, sorry, go ahead. This is a time where everyone is reading this book and the Mm -hmm. video girls are all being categorized as this. And Mm -hmm. so there's a ton of questions aimed at Melissa and other women um, about whether or not they're doing the same thing. Isn't it incumbent on her to clarify? Yes, absolutely. And and that's what I'm trying to get at, to say, uh-huh. I do not do those types of things. A lot of the women that I work with, we do not do those types of things. Corinne clearly told her own story. It's not fair that, that now, um, well, I was about to say sex workers, excuse me. It's not fair that video vixens are now being painted with the same brush. Completely understandable. That's not what she did. Right? Isn't she, it not what she did? Well, let me explain why. It, it, that was the foundation of what she did. But it, the way it um, went into put down territory to talk about the fact that you have morals, right? Thus implying that she has none. That's one thing. And another thing is whether Wait, or not did, Corinne. She didn't say she has morals. She said she had a certain type of moral. Hmm. Okay. Isn't it like, <laughs> Fine. I mean, <laughs> to indicate, thus indicating that Corinne has a different set that is not up to par. 
Well, Can we well, always agree not, there? The, 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 it can be different without elevating. I mean, it could elevate or not, but I'm just, I'm trying to understand because it, mm-hmm. it feels like if you are in the same industry as mm-hmm. someone and the industry is fraught with allegations about how people navigate sleeping their way to the top essentially and then one of the people in the industry comes out and say yep i did it it feels like you are going to want to say look she did it she owned it that's good with her but i don't do that and also Mm -hmm. please don't look at me as that i mean they're not going to listen to her but wouldn't it be like a natural human thing to say yeah i didn't do that Right, but just the way you articulated it, she did not do that. She added in things that were, one, virtue signaling, two, very much slut-shaming, and three, very much arrogant. So I think we talked about, you know, video vixens being, well, that whole gambit of women in video vixens and sex, sorry, ex-workers. I forgot where I was for a second. (laughs) <laughs> um, <laughs> that whole spectrum, and I think we're going to get into this a little bit later about societal rules and norms around women and why we behave this way. So Melissa understood which spectrum she was under, but she does not want to be in the middle or the bottom of the spectrum. So she's going to do anything she can to make her seem like she's almost not in this category and whatever and and i'm just i'm just gonna go based off of the words that she said if i were to just read them on paper i would pick up the same things because of the word choice she used to answer the questions she was being asked so i think the first question she was alluding to you know othering herself from the entirety of the group And then because the book was out, she got asked a specific question about a specific person. And even that to me, even though she strategically used the same words Corinne used for herself. And again, I don't know her tone. I don't know how she answered this. I don't know how if she was joking, if she was serious, but just the bare words of it all. She didn't have to do that. You can like like DJ said, you can other yourself without having to degrade another woman. If it degrade- if you don't prostitute yourself, you don't do that. But why do you need to in the in the realm of that shame everybody and everybody catch your strays now. Yeah, but she's is she shame come on Discord, love seeing you beautiful people up there. Oh thank you LCM nineteen eighty three. Appreciate that. But is she shaming? Why do you believe she's shaming? Why do because you, of the words she used and the what, way she what, used exactly. them. Exactly. So when she that. had to bring out, when she's asking about, she got asked about video vixens, why do you need to bring in, I have a certain amount of morals and values that I grew up with. Well, I did Yes, say it's the on its face, on have. its face, on its face, it doesn't seem like much, right? But what's up under that? Why was that important verbiage for her to use? Because going back to the church, purity culture. So even though she's in the spectrum of being quote unquote a hoe, she understands there's degrees and levels to this. And I'd rather be on the fringes than be deep in that. So then I don't get shamed from women. And then I don't, I, I, fringes though like you 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 keep saying not you but like you all except alicia hasn't spoken or level up so (laughs) dj and and, um uh coco you you all are saying she's trying to look like she's on the fringes and blah blah what if she is on the fringes like what if she's like i don't like she's saying what what is she on the fringes of she's saying i don't with men like that for whatever Koran is doing. But this is the because thing. It, it's, it's, it's fake. It's not real. You're not really... You're. It's like, yes, you may be the least hoish, but you're still... Not saying that they're hoes. I'm saying, in society's view, women that partake in these things are whores. 
right? Corinne yeah. said Categorically it. speaking. So it's a pseudo comfort level of survival of trying to fit into society that has these rules. And if I convince myself and everyone else that I'm different and I'm on the fringes, that allots me more safety and opportunity over other women that I don't want to lose out on because I know how they get treated when they're exiled from the community. It's yeah, the same but, thing but, about but, being an escort versus being a streetwalker. You're doing the exact same thing. One of y'all just has all some good $100,000, I mean, a $1,000 pair of shoes and the other ones, you know, maybe in the back of a One's alley, blue collar and thing. one's white collar. No, exactly. but, but both of them are doing the kind of same thing, just at different price point. She's literally saying, I don't do this. This is different. It's not a difference in um, degree. It's a literally a difference in kind. This is a different thing. And I don't. Can I get into. Can I speak I to what you're. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I just want to speak to what you're trying to point out here because I get what you're saying. You're saying that she's saying she sleeps with people. I, or she sleeps with people under these circumstances. I don't do that. But the thing is with her language, she's talking about morality. She used the word morality. So number one, she's talking about morality. She did not talk about the morality of everyone in that environment, which includes the men, because then we would have to get into why are these situations even happening on the men's side? She spoke well, other times. No, no, that's a separate conversation, but I do actually want us to get into the, the, I think the the people we should be addressing are the men in the situation because a lot of what yeah, but let me but let me fit. But that's but that's the indication of where we can go with her in dissecting what she meant by what she said and how she said it. If she's talking about morality, if morality is an issue for her, that is okay. But she was only speaking on the women. Yeah, but and that's she's fine because they're comparing her to another woman, and I do actually think patriarchy and misogyny is probably what she should have been attacking. But the issue here in her statement is creating a divide between between, uh, and this is the question: Is it? I yes, am not I'm like, getting there. Wait, I'm getting I'm there. Not, I'm not like other girls. I'm not like those girls versus I'm not like that specific girl. And is there a difference in how we discuss those three? No. I think no. the only way that there would be a difference is if the intention of what you're saying is different. Wait, so if I say you were like sexy right, you all would be like, yeah, I'm good. No, I would say, well, I don't do... Well, first of all, I don't know Sexy Red well enough to know what she does in her spare time. I know her music. So if she were to sit here and say, everything that I've said in my songs, I have done. If someone were to ask me, hey, are you like Sexy Red? I would say, no, I don't. I haven't done the things that she said she's done. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm leaving so, it at okay. that. So the statement, I am not like that specific girl, does not create a quote unquote picture character. How is that no. not what she's doing? I think the it's the words that you right. use, though. Yeah. Because well, if someone were to say... say one second, one second, to the chat, I am not putting my own feelings out there. I'm trying to get, <laughs> uh, like, we're trying to dig through this, and I have to ask question in this way to get to a point. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm a firm believer and I, I may not need to be a firm believer because the more I study about this, the more it gets unhinged. But I'm a firm believer that people say maybe a tenth of what they think. So when someone's asked a question, it can kind of inform what their thought process is when answering that question. So if someone were to say, oh, you listen to Sexy Red, you must be just like her. And if I say, well, no, I don't, you know, I don't twerk on headlights, which I do, but, you know, don't judge. <laughs> or I don't wear red wigs or I don't have face tattoos. That is very different than saying, oh, hell no, not that whore. I could never be like that ratchet whore. There's a completely different, even if I said it calmly, oh, you're comparing me to that ratchet girl, ghetto girl. Are you serious? We're not the same. I grew up in the suburbs. I went to private school. Hmm. Okay. I passed the bar on the first time. How dare you compare me to that? 
I am way better than that. Hmm. I, like, why I, do you need to I, say I, all of that just to say that you don't do something that they do? It's real weird. Because right, like to answer your question, Themis, like you asked me, you compared me to Sexy Red. My intention in answering your question is to make the distinction that she does certain things that I do not do. I'm being factual. Now, when it goes into, ew, yuck, like what? You think I do engage in that type of behavior? Now you're hearing the judgment, right? You're, I'm making a judgment. That is, it wrong, is it wrong to judge her? She she is entitled I to judge her, right? My question is, would you judging her and putting on this performance for whoever asked you this question, did does that work out in your favor? And I'm saying that for a specific reason, I'm, but I'm going to take a step back because I know Vitamin wants to talk, but there is something that I do feel like. Yeah, before should. Vitamin goes on, it feels like we're saying don't judge, but like we all judge. Um, there are moral implications with the language we use. And so saying I am not like her, I don't sleep around in the music industry. Yeah, there's a judgment being made and she's saying I don't sleep around and she and I have different morals. She's okay with being an H as she said, I am not that. I like... How Can I other myself before that? vitamin goes? <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. So I don't... I don't agree with the belief system and the societal history that goes behind her statements. I am full, I am in full agreement. Women that think like this should say this out loud. Please let me know you are not a safe person to be around. She can say whatever she wants. She can make whatever judgments that she wants. And I'm glad she said it out loud because those of us that peeped it, now we know. Is it unsafe for a woman with her quote-unquote moralities um, to speak about her moralities? I think, it really depends mean? on how she speaks. Like that, and that's the thing. I that's at least what I'm trying to get at. It's that you her judging, she, we can't control whether or not someone else judges. So we all judge people, we all do that, we all put people on levels, but making that clear. Doing that for an audience, that is my issue because I did a little bit of research after our conversation. It ends up coming back to bite women as a collective, women engaging in this behavior. And that is why I take issue with that. Wait, so, yes, wait, wait, what, go what, ahead. What you were saying, women speaking out about the sex threads of the world. Is no, 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 not speaking women? out about them, not speaking out about them, but specifically speaking down to them. Yeah. And, and there's a reason why I'm saying it, but I don't, like I said, I want to ensure everybody gets, like, says what right. they need to say before. Right. Level up single mom and then um, Alicia. Women police other women. The end game is limited resources being fueled by a male gaze. Moreover, Ms. Ford uses her to want her Canadianness to appear better than more internet, uh, than more international, international, it is a jab. Um, I think it is a jab. I do think so. Um, so that's my opinion, because I think I needed to put that out there. But thank you, Ultimate Enigma. All right, Vitamin, go ahead. And then Alicia. So first off, everything, well, me and DJ were vibing that day when we first had the conversation. So yeah, everything DJ said. Um, but for me, more importantly, because like I know you like to get into the really deeply analytical and objective portion of you, what we're talking about when it comes down to it she has opened herself up to a certain level of scrutiny in her language to talk about morality like i said is to bring in the morality of the entire situation she is left lacking All right. so there's Let's that aspect back. right wait i'm not Let me finish. Nope. mainly because i'm not sure how long i'm going to be able to stay on i don't know what's going on with my internet though so i want to get it all out um so there's that that opens her up to scrutiny in that way also um to what dj was saying it's you don't have to i can say because you asked her specifically like what she would say about sexy red i would say i like her song that's also an objective truth you can redirect you can say you can find something positive to say and this is all about we talk about staying on code 
So for her, her code was, there are lesser women than me. Notice that I am not down there. I am up here. So therefore I deserve this and I deserve, like that's a lack thought. And then again, it begs the question, who are you doing that for? From whom do you need this classification and this validation or to be seen here as opposed to where you interpret her to be? So right. these are all things that if she's going to have that opinion and she's going to voice that opinion in that way, you have now opened yourself up to this type of scrutiny. But Corinne doesn't open herself up to that kind of scrutiny from Melissa. She opens herself up, but the difference is I'm going to respect a Corinne more than I respect a Melissa because she's not trying to play to respectability politics. She's telling you what happened. And I don't feel like she was looking for sympathy because she surely wasn't getting it from anywhere, but she kept going and talking regardless. She was trying to tell a story. She was trying to talk to the people who had been where she had been and felt how she had felt and let them know that they weren't crazy and that they weren't less than. Mm. Oh. Extra words aren't needed. Simply, I don't do X, Y, and Z. <laughs> Um, go ahead, Alicia. I think uh, Level Up went out. She's back, but I don't know if her mic is working. I don't know what last you heard. That. The word that. <laughs> See, I was just saying that she had different intentions, and it was clear what her intentions were. She was trying to uplift women, and Melissa was trying to stand on top of women. Wait, you think she was trying to uplift? Who do you think was uplifting women? Corinne. Where? How would how can you say, do you feel like my book was trying to uplift women? Because I said some really embarrassing things. Yeah, your your book was uplifting women. Corinne literally says, Oh, I don't care where I am, I will continue to do this. My um what Lil Wayne, if I if Lil Wayne wanted, no matter who I'm with, I'll just get up and it didn't seem to be uplift. I mean, we can get different things. It's it's literature. We can get different things. I didn't feel like they were she was I right, period. I mean, we get different things. I I didn't get that. I mean, sharing your story when it's the story of that, you know, in the society that we're in, just doing that is brave. Even if we don't like the content of it, I think we all can acknowledge that in our society, even to today, we do not uplift women who are in control sexually over their bodies. She wasn't in control of her body, though. And the reason I like but the for her to speak on it, right, is yeah. that kind of reclaiming the power back? Yeah, well, this is separate, right? The the book itself, for me, and I don't know if Karen recognizes the kind of abuse she went through um, and how men were attempting to use her, even the thing with Jay-Z that she um, highlighted. Um, a lot of this, I don't think, was about choice. I don't think she actually had meaningful choice and decision-making power, autonomy and agency. And so that's why I disagree with Melissa. But to take Melissa and Karen at their words where Karen <laughs> is saying that, yeah, I was her age, essentially, and I'm claiming that. And Melissa interpreting it the same way I'm using that, but when I read her book, I don't get I was fully empowered. Um, her childhood was traumatic. Um, her experiences were traumatic. And mm -hmm. the decisions to give herself so that herself cannot be taken is not a real decision, um, I mm -hmm. don't believe. But so so there is nuance, a lot of nuance. There. Like there's a, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that happened that like I don't even think at that time she even understood or could articulate what was going on. Yeah. Um, that's that's why I say the phys just the just the physical act of writing the book and putting it out there, even if she wasn't at a level of healing where she could, you know, accept everything and you know, kind of do it differently. Um, and I think now her kind of journey on Instagram, you can kind of see like she's kind of, you know, come a long way since this book has came out. 
Um, but I think the physical act of her just, because a lot of women suffer in silence. And it takes a lot to just be transparent and be unapologetically yourself, even if yourself is not prim, pretty, and proper. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Alicia. I just, I just want to say, um, so I wrote down some notes while you all were talking just to, to keep me on track. But I do want to say for the conversation about like uplifting other women, because she was exploited, because she was coerced, right? Her speaking out and naming people, naming the big names, which is why she was blackballed in the first place. To me, that is brave. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really have anything to say about like the way that she lived her life as people would say, like, what's brave about telling sex stories? It's brave to out the people who are exploiting the women who might not have, you know, either the bravery or the ability to speak about their experiences in the industry. So I think that her naming names and putting, especially now when people are getting called out for all the things that they're doing now, I think that her book might help, actually. It might actually help some um, some people who might want to speak out later on. But what I wanted to, what I wanted to say was intention, right? Like, it's one thing to say something. What is the intention? What are you trying to do? Like, we can, we can pretend all day long, like, oh, yeah, she's just othering herself. She has a right to do that, right? But when you're, what is your intention? Your intention is to appeal to the men that you're speaking to. Your, your intention is to other, other can women. We, can we kind of disagree on this just for the sake of disagreeing? Um, because um, I don't know if that, that is necessarily true. What's that? That she was appealing to men. She could well, have been appealing to Christianity. She could have been appealing to her culture. She could be appealing to other women. She but, could I, mm -hmm. but I think I think at the heart of it is still men, right? Like I think at the heart of even if you're appealing to Christianity, it's still what men think but, about women who are fast yeah, and loose. The patriarchy would be the overarching thing that yeah. exists. And so everything is an appeal to men yeah. in this way. And then it becomes like kind of useless. As, as I mean, I, I don't, I don't think that it's useless. I think that, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I I'm probably like way behind in the conversation, but like, no, 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 I, no. Sorry. I, 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 to be fair, let me be clear. I agree with you okay. that the most likely people that she's appealing to with men yeah. by telling, "I am not like that girl," right? Because. We know what that girl gets. We know how that girl is treated. She's treated. Exactly. And so to not be treated, and because low-key, you're working with men who don't like women. <laughs> like you have to, you also have to not like women, right? You have to come across like, oh, I'm one of the, I'm one of the guys. Like I'm I'm just like you. But but what is what is ironic and kind of hypocritical to me is that you're still selling sex, right? Like as as a as a video girl or video vixen, right? However they want to, you know, however, um, excuse me. What's her name? Melissa. However, she identifies herself. Like in her past life, you were still selling sex, right? You're, or you're selling the illusion of sex, right? You're selling, you're selling, um, and by selling, I don't mean necessarily your body, but I'm saying like when the rapper is like, oh, these H's, these B's, whatever, and they're pointing to you, right? You're the actress and this presenting this idea of like, oh, I'm the one that he's talking about. I'm the one that he's talking about having sex with. So you benefit. You benefited from that, from that life. And I guess for mm-hmm. The issue with that kind of connection is that we're putting the two things, one sleeping with these men mm -hmm. versus selling the fantasy of being with these men in videos as one in the same. And I to, think for Melissa, she's separating them. To me, if you are selling the act, like if you're, if I don't, okay. If we're talking about morality, right? If she wants to be like, I'm not those like those other girls, to me, that is a, I don't, I, okay, I don't mean that she's having sex with people, right? Yeah. But if we're talking about like, you're not one of the girls, but you, you got pushed forward by presenting yourself as one of those girls, whether we knew that you were sleeping with men or not, right? Like, to me, that is, that's none of my business, right? But what I'm talking about is the fact that you were involved with these same men, who, you're still kind of involved with these same men who benefit from exploiting, like, exploiting women for their bodies, their resources, whatever, right? And and, and at the time, I kind of don't want to, I don't know. I hear what you're saying about, like, you don't have to say that you did X, Y, and Z. Because if you didn't do it, you didn't do it, right? Yeah. But that can that can be a, what is, I want to say benign, but that could be, like, its own thing. Like, I didn't do this. But when you bring someone else to step on her shoulder, so to speak, and to be like, oh, no, but... I'm not like her looking down on these women like who who did those things. And also also something else I wrote down is that black women, sadly, like 
we don't, we don't, and I say, I'm saying this, I'm going to clean it up, but we don't have the power to not call ourselves H's, right? Like we, we don't, what is to be, to be, to be clear, like what is, what are the prerequisites to be called an H? What are the prerequisites to be called a B, right? Like who, who determines what is that definition, right? You could never sleep with somebody and somebody could still call you an H. You, you could, you could be kind and docile and somebody still call you a B. You feel me? And so I think, I think what we're losing to me, what is, what is clear to me, the reason I keep coming back to patriarchy is because she's trying to use power that she doesn't have. Like, it's, it's almost like, what am I trying to say? Help me, help me. No, I, I feel I like she, okay. You. No, I agree with you. I think she, the power is with men, right? And she is using proximity to these men um, and appealing to these men to say, I am not like that girl, but you won't be protected by saying you are not like that girl because you will be treated like that girl. Either way. You are not sleeping around, doesn't change your image in their mind. Right. And it won't stop them from coming towards you and attempting to do what they wanted to do with you, um, regardless of how much you deny your availability in that way. Yes. yes. However... Is it wrong for her to separate herself in the same way and say, regardless of what is happening, I don't do that? Yeah, I, I don't I think there's do anything. That. I don't think there's anything wrong with it by itself. I, I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong by saying, "Oh yeah, that's not my experience." Like that's where you could have, "Oh yeah, that's not that's not what I experienced" or whatever. But then, like later on, to talk about you also being harassed by men, to talk about like the things that you went through, it's like something's not true. Like some, like you're. Something, something is not true. Like you're, you're saying, it's almost like the way that she presents it. It's almost like she wants us to forget like what videos that she was in, what song she was dancing to, or, you know, like, because in my mind, if you're, if you're thinking that these women are below you, then why are you in videos with them? I'm confused. Like if, if you think that you're, if you think that you're better than like, it does, it just doesn't but make sense to think me. You're not, but you can think you are better than whatever someone does without mm -hmm. thinking you are better than the person. Right? Like you yeah. can not agree with someone's values and willingness to engage in certain behaviors. Yeah. And I think I would be more inclined to believe you all after watching Melissa through the years and the fact that she does, in fact, think I am, from my perspective, it seemed like I'm a biracial and I'm better than those black women. Like that's the vibe I get from Melissa. I could be wrong, but that's the vibe I get. That does not mean, however, she is wrong about wanting to differentiate herself from someone who sleeps around in the industry. Even if she sleeps around in the industry, um, Karen, Karen, right? Karen. I don't want to say superhead, so I'm not going to use that moniker. Mm -hmm. She um, writes about it and told the story about it and even did interviews saying, yeah, girl, this is what I do. And also, I will continue to do it now, specifically with Lil Wayne, right? It, it feels very, like, it's almost like we're saying we don't get to separate ourselves. And let me just use women, because I would do it with men. I'm not like that man. I don't care. But it feels like you're saying we as women should be one and collective, and we don't get to separate ourselves no. from those people over there. No, I and never. Have... Yeah, a, a few oh. issues. Mm -hmm. A few issues, if I if I may. For one thing, to bring up Little Wayne, my question is: Did she specify that she would accept money from him in exchange for showing up whenever he wanted? her to. No money was because the vibe no exactly money. the vibe that I got is that little Wayne just has such a hold on her that whenever he calls her she goes running. Would I consider that H behavior? Not necessarily if we're talking about accepting money for these acts. You can say she's dumb, you can say she's whatever. But you cannot call her an H for that. No, so I mean, I, I think can't... people can call, not can, would call her that generally. I'll, so Alicia I'll get back is to that. right. Wait, wait. Mm -hmm. Alicia is right. You don't get to define it, and people will call you whatever they want to call you because you don't have the power to like not be called that, right? Regardless of if you've never done something or if you slept with everyone, right? But to the, the definition, she literally said, even if I'm with my man, if I'm in my marriage, the man is going to have to be aware that, like, I, anytime Lil Wayne call, I'm going, right? Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't feel empowering. It does, And it, it, it could be. I think the, the act of naming names and writing about your abuse is itself empowering 
even if the intent wasn't to empower, right? Like we can do that. I want to point something out about what you just said, though. When it comes down to it, like, so her name's Elizabeth now, by the way. Um, so I'll try to use her name, her na current name moving forward. But Elizabeth was very clear about herself and, you know, that that was the feeling she had towards him. And she was just expressing herself. Like, I don't really know how else to convey that everything that's ever come out of Corinne, I mean, huh, at the time, Corinne, now Elizabeth's mouth has always been. And I say this about the men all the time. She was saying, I, 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 me, me, me. She did not have to differentiate. She did not have to classify. She did not have to anything. She said, this is what I think. This is what I feel. This is what I've experienced. This is about me. I'm telling you about me. It's the fact that, and I know, you know, you'll say they asked her, but like, I, you know, you said you looked and I kept saying during that conversation, whenever Melissa was asked a question, <laughs> she always found a way to bring other people in to then classify herself. And that speaks to character. So yes, we're talking about, you know, what she said and how she said it and yada, yada, yada. But ultimately it is a manifestation of her character. And that aspect of her character is lacking. And it says something and we get to vet, we, you know, we get to vet, we get to, you know, take her out of the number for that because she's not okay. safe. I'll say this again too, because I think a lot of people are missing the distinction here. To separate yourself from someone, in my opinion, should not be synonymous to putting someone else down. This is a separation, right? This this could be a separation. That's not what Melissa was doing. Is there she was ever putting a separation her down. where there is an hierarchy being created? Let me ask you a question. This is an example that I brought up too. I told you that I don't think I could ever be a lawyer because you guys do too much boring reading for me. Does that mean I look down upon the lawyers and the profession? No, it doesn't. So it's possible. It is possible no, to separate yourself from something or say that something isn't no, suitable for you without putting yourself. it beneath you. No, I mean, one could interpret that as I, it is above me because I, I wouldn't do that. Above, I, well, you can interpret it that way, but yeah. me personally, it's about a it's about understanding. Mm -hmm. A separation is never clearly just like we're on the same level. This, depending on who is receiving that separation, it is going to do this or this. A separation is never just really that. It, if you give me an example, I can make it this or this. Like it's okay, never so let's really do... just like separated. But I think, again, it's like in how you say something, right? Mm -hmm. Like, say we were at a networking event and someone came up to us, they knew you and say, let's just say you you practice personal injury law. And someone asked me, oh, well, do you are you a personal injury attorney, too? And I say, no, I happen to practice criminal law. Versus, really, you think I would want to do something like that? Absolutely not. I'm a criminal attorney. Are you asking me if there's a separation and which one of them creates? Because, uh, like, the, by naming it, you you've created a distinction, and the distinction but, comes with. But it's a values. lateral distinction. It is. Well, not actually, a actually, hold on. One, one, one additional point. One additional point, because I understand what you're saying. You can make anything go like this, but in her two different statements, which one made it more clear where how she felt about personal injury? But Which one made it more the clear? The second one, the, like, you, I could right. never do that, right? That's completely fine, except mm -hmm. the moral judgment being made is saying that sleeping around is a bad thing in um, Melissa's mind. She can have that opinion. And so she can say, I don't sleep around. She does that. She don't mind being called an H. She said she's an H. That's fine. I am not that. I think myself better than that. Mm. That okay. Fine. So to that, I say, if she's entitled to her moral judgment, why aren't we entitled to ours? Oh no! You, exactly. No. You open like, or not? Uh, no, no, Themis. No, no, no. I'm not talking up for you. 
I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm saying the same way she made a moral judgment on Corinne, I can make a moral judgment on her. And oh, yeah. I believe that the way in which she handled it, though I understand why she wanted to other herself for the reasons that all the ladies on this panel laid out, she does not want the same treatment. So I understand, right? But the very people you're talking to, trying to convince, they're the issue. Again, I understand why she didn't want to make them the issue because Corinne was the easier target. But that is that is just one example of an overarching issue, I feel. Yeah, I mean, the the men who engage in the behavior, the what, what she described with Jay-Z allegedly um, was about power and, and, and how you negotiate power when you don't have it and how power is used against women in this industry um, to get them to do things that they might have otherwise not do, right? And I think the second level of this, when we get into like what I think she should have attacked, which is patriarchy and show solidarity, maybe she doesn't want to be in community and have solidarity with someone she think is an age. I, th I think there is, when you said theme, it's like people are allowed to have their opinions. Uh, Melissa, Melissa is allowed to think, because she's human, she's allowed to think that people who engage, engage, in, what, engage in what Elizabeth did is beneath her, right? And sure, if that's how she feels, that's how she feels. But there are always going to be people like this. Is why we're having this, this this discussion in the first place? Like there, are even people in, in the in the chat. You know, some people say like, "Oh, well, I don't want to be associated with that person either." It's like right because we know what happens. We know yeah. what happens when we are associated with people like that. We know what happens when we get that label. And I think that's that's what we're talking about. I, I think whether people don't do anything you're not comfortable with. Nobody's saying that you have to go out there and go do the same things. Or if you don't want to hang out with those with those those people using air quotes, <laughs> then you don't have to. Right. But you also don't have to put other people down to go hang out with the people that you want to hang out with. Because I don't think that we realize, as especially as Black women, that this hierarchy that we think that we have doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. If sadly, because like, I feel like for Black people in general, right, we have this thing of like, oh, I'm not that kind of Black. Like, just like with respectability politics, right? I don't dress like that. I don't go to those places. I don't speak like that. We always find reasons to believe that we're higher than each other. And like, as Black women, again, like... We don't have, sadly, in this in the West, right? We don't have this this uh this power that we think that we have. And when you downplay and put down another black woman, the people who are above you in this hierarchy see you as just the same. It's just, like they see, like sadly, like when we're when we're listening to the music and they're like, oh, the B words and the H's, they're talking about all of us. They're not just talking about the girls in the video. They're not talking about, they're not talking about, you know, homegirl down the street. They see all of us as that. Like, and, and I think, and I think oh. that we do ourselves a disservice by pretending it, I don't know, or do leaning into this. Do you think it's the same for men? Because I agree time, with I'm sorry. you. Do you think it's the same for men? Should men, because I think I find black men are very sort of in sync. Um, and even if they don't engage in certain behavior, they defend um certain behaviors of mm -hmm. like men sleeping around. Let's use that, for example. Um, mm -hmm. and it how do you guys think about this? Because on one hand, like, in my mind, we men should shame other men who engage in bad behavior, right? That is my position um, in order to change the behavior. Um, but the bad behavior is like sleeping around with multiple women. Um, but I think shaming women for sleeping around is a bad thing. And so like, I've been trying to reconcile mm. this huge discrepancy that I have. Mm -hmm. um, can you, can any, can you all kind of like put it together for me? Well, well for me, one question I would have, right. Like the question that I have is, is the criticism of men who sleep around or the criticism of men who sleep around, but tell each woman that they're the only one or they're in a relationship and they're cheating. Like, which one is it? Because me personally, I don't cast much judgment on a single person doing what single people can do, right? Mm. It's about moving with a moral code and, and abiding by that. So are okay. we talking about truly immoral behavior, which is giving people a false impression of what's happening? Or is it just them exercising their bodily autonomy and laying down with who, whoever the hell they want to lay down with? 
So if a right. man is in Car- uh, Elizabeth, right? That's her real mm-hmm. name position and he is like sleeping around with men or women or whatever um women sleeping about around with a bunch of women in the industry and then write a book about them i would feel different but there is a power dynamic there um maybe that is different but i'm struggling because when I define very specific things as, as bad behavior, and I'm opposed to it. Um, sleeping around is one of them for me when it comes to men, but I don't think about women sleeping around at all. Um, but it seems like sleeping around from y'all's perspective is a, it's fine. Like you don't it's judge not, it, it's, matter, it's, it's whatever. Not- I don't judge in that it's your life and all I would want for you to do is ensure that you're being smart, you're being safe, you're getting tested, you're doing all of these things. That is what I care about. Not how many people you're laying down. I would want you to move honestly. I would want you to be honest with your partners. I would want you to have certain conversations with them, use protection, all of those things, right? So I get it. Let me be very clear. I get that some people are not with that. Understandable. The issue for me, though, is that for me, you would have to explain to me why you have your perception, that perception of sex, right? Chances are it's going to come back to some man who told you that that's not ladylike. It's going to come back to your religion. It's going to come back to some external force. How many people have a perception on sex that was not influenced by these external sources? They were able to make their own decision. Well, you don't. You really cannot do that. Morality generally comes from, I mean, I think there is, well, I don't want to get into philosophy, but there is this uh, sort of intrinsic moral meter of sorts. But generally, morality is community-based and agreed upon. Um, And so when when we talk about um, the... I, Amber Rose had the S walk where like, you know what I mean? Like walk mm-hmm. around and being proud of it. And there is a kind of feminism that promotes like bodily autonomy and being sexually free, um, which in some ways is not actually freedom. It's just be playing to the male gaze, right? Mm-hmm. But is, is sleeping around in this way about autonomy? Is it autonomy? Is, is yes. It- Yes, it's about autonomy because ultimately it comes down to this. What I do with my body has no impact on you. What I do with my body in the case of Melissa, you know, in this situation, in the talk, Melissa made those judgments, you know, we're assuming based off of, we're making educated guesses rather, that Melissa made those judgments she made about um, Elizabeth based off of this notion that Elizabeth was somehow wronging her and women kind and doing women kind a disservice by doing what she wanted to do with her body, which in essence- Wait, wait, that's not, I feel like that that is too far an extension. She was Wait, 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 I'm trying to bring it home for you. Like I'm I'm not finished. This idea juxtaposed with the way men can do whatever but we are still supposed to maintain the image of men so that men can continue to do whatever. This idea that someone has wronged you by doing something with their own body is ridiculous. Meanwhile, we have men doing actual things that impact real people in a negative way, very bad ways, and it's brushed under the rug. the, The analysis can be about like, why are you attacking her instead of attacking the system of power around her? Which is what I would agree. No, with I'm taking it. I'm taking it completely down to a personal level. What is what she doing doing to you? I'm not responding to you yet. But I, in direct response to you, I wouldn't say she's saying you are doing this against womankind. You don't have to go that far. You can say, I am in this industry with you. And when people already think we are in this industry and we operate this way, when you come out and say, yes, you operate this way, and it's not always clear that you're only talking about you, you have indicted the indictment is not just on you, but the entire industry that I am now a part of. And I want to separate myself. I would say that she might still be wrong because 
it is not about uh, her and she's the bigger, t the easiest target. But what you should be targeting is a system that shames you for the position that you're in. But she could still want to separate herself. Uh, I wish I could collect on some of my eggs. Let's not judge others for collecting their deals. <laughs> But this is the thing when it comes to this idea of, oh, what you're doing is creating these conditions within this workspace. I think that's a crock of bull because at the end of the day, that type of thing was happening in any industry where women are. No, that type of thing happened. So to sit and say, oh, you're doing this and you're creating this environment for me is not true. Yeah, no, it is true because in this discussion, you have all conceded that she, women in this industry of have already been seen this way. So her pretending like attacking um, Elizabeth is going to change how people view her. It's not because of the industry. People said she wanted to act like she's on the fringes um, and she's different. And so there, it seems like based on the conversation we are having, there is a specific need for her to say, I know what this looks like. I understand that y'all think we do this based on my profession. And this lady came out and said, she does this. Please be clear, I don't do this. Now, did she say it in the best way? Probably not, but continue. That's but not, see, but I don't feel like it's the focus on Corinne specifically and saying, oh, she did this and she's this type of person. Like I said, you can make the statement that you made would have been an acceptable statement. I feel like you guys are interpreting that anyone that does this type of work does this. That takes it off of that specific person. That's not her putting that person or a person, another person that does that no, down. That's her no, thing. You have this perception and that's a you problem. But she you don't get to do that. Bringing this up, they're asking her specifically about this person who wrote. Yeah, this but that's book. still an answer she could have given. And yes, they may have pushed, but she's. You know, we've seen it all the time. People that interview, there are ways to redirect. There are ways to answer questions when you don't want to dip into certain ponds, or you don't want to, you know, but speak to certain people or things like that. But if she actually think it's bad. Like when I uh, when I brought up the men thing earlier, what I was trying to get at, and I didn't articulate it properly, is that I think there's a difference in kind. It's not one for one. I get that, but like for me, I feel like if you're asking me about things that I think are bad that men do, that I shouldn't dance around it. I should address it directly. Um, but. I think there's a difference in kind, and I'm waiting for someone to articulate that. I have it in my mind, I think. And this is not an exercise in me, like, explaining anything. I'm trying to push this conversation all the way over, because I, I generally agree with y'all. But I'm trying to see if we, if we agree for the same reason. Because I think it's fine to say I'm not like that specific person, woman or man. <laughs> Can you clarify what you're... What you're not without, I guess, without saying what you're trying to say, but like, ask like what you're I trying think, to. If I think a man that did something that is morally reprehensible, I don't feel any obligation to defend or to sidestep a question directed at me about that action. And it seems like you all are saying she should sidestep the question um, and answer more generally and be um, a I better be, ally to her sister. Can I be frank? Because I think there is, there are specific acts that humans can do that any human can say, I do not do that. Right? And I think the issue that we may be having is that we're applying that to a woman having sex. And that's wild because it's different than saying like Jeffrey Dahmer. No, I am not a cannibal that eats black men. No. <laughs> or for, you know, Mary Kay Letourneau. Absolutely the fuck not. I do not do that like her. If y'all don't, if y'all too young for that, Mary Kay Letourneau, just, just, just Google it on your free time. Um, so, I mean, I think there are certain things that we would be like, absolutely full stop, no. I don't think a woman 
engaging in sex should be at that same level because obviously right. if a man is like womanizing mm-hmm. and being abusive to his his you know the women that he entertains of course if someone came up to you as a man themis and asked you about that I wouldn't even bat an eyelash for you saying absolutely the fuck not. I do well not yeah. even, I would say it. like I would say it, but you would make a clear distinction. I do not put my hands on women like he does. So I mean I get it, but I don't think this particular thing, and I get, you know, this is back in the early two thousands, but I think it will be the same in this time, which is unfortunate. So I mean, I get it, but it's like you don't have to put women down. For the perception of pseudo protection, we're all at danger. We're all in danger. Mm-hmm. Case in point, Chloe and Howie. Competition amongst women is fierce. Media is like team sports. The best player on women's team is never the most popular. The most popular is the prettiest and the most likable. Women police women. Agreed ultimate enigma. Thank you so much. I actually agree. Aisha the cool girl says, Theme is my birthday. It's tomorrow. Can I get a shout out? Happy birthday to you, Aisha. I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly. Um, I hope you have a fun, fun day tomorrow. Excited for you. Thank you. Um, Hey, theme, thoughts, and food cakes. I'm on vacation, but I'm tuned in. Handsome as always, theme, thank you for having this conversation as always. Thank you, thank you, thank you, wake up. Thank you for being here on your vacation. Ethics is community and personal based, and morals are personal. Um, uh, your morals are informed, however, by your community generally. Um, but yeah, thank you, Bullet Magnet. And then the last one. The abortion issue in the nation is on the table because of women. Men do not care as much when polled. Patriarchy is upheld by women. Agreed. Male validation and perceived limited resources on learning is needed. Agreed. Um, I think there is an issue. Not I'm a different breed. <laughs> um so Melissa was cosplaying a, a, a and is mad at the authentic age and don't want to be stereotyped. As a, <laughs> girl, 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 girl. There's a drag, and I'm here for it. I think that's what I was. I think that's what I was saying earlier. It's like you benefited from being perceived this way, and now you don't want to be perceived this way. Like it's it. It just feels. And it's her fault. Like, I don't, I don't want to say like culture vulture is not the right term. Right. But it's like you, you literally dipped into a culture that you're not a part of, apparently. Right. That, that to get to make money. And then you left that culture off the back of like off the strength of being perceived as this person. Then you go out into a different era but in your I life. Mean, and now you're like, isn't that like really unfair, though, to sort of say if being a video girl means you're a part of your cosplay? <laughs> I mean, no, I don't, I, I don't, the thing is, it, it the thing, is I'm not unfair, saying that she had to have, oh, sorry. Right, that is society. It, I mean, it is. I'm I'm saying saying it, that's, that's it, it, wait, so y'all go yeah. sit up here and say, that's society. And no, not, no. That's society and we don't agree with society. Right. We're literally what going, going up here no, swinging no, against you society. Get, no, no, you don't get Famous. to say that's society. You do not get to say that's society when Melissa is literally society. Like, Right. I'm not is, disputing that Melissa isn't in line with society. I'm disputing that society should think that. There's a comment that says something towards the lines of uh, Elizabeth at that time wasn't valuing herself. And this is my thing with it. And this is really like at the heart of all these kinds of conversations about people behaving in this way, such as Melissa. This idea that, oh, well, this person didn't value themselves. Objectively, that may be true. But what does that have to do with how you choose to treat this person? You choosing to treat this person is your own thing. It has nothing to do with them, anything they've done, anything they could do. It speaks about you. And so when people see you and respond to you, it is is what it is. It's too broad. Depending on what you might do is going to dictate how I treat you. If I think you're no, 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 I'm not talking about person. I'm not talking about person to person. If we're talking about people in 
in um, situations where they're choosing to interact with each other. But I mean, in general, because even general, when we talk about these men, I'm saying the statement is too broad. How you treat, how I treat you is going to be dictated in a lot of ways by how you act. If you're a thief, I am not leaving you in my house. <laughs> like, that's not well, yeah. Again, again the, example, the example you bring up is a crime. It's something bad. And I think okay. that's, that's no, what no, 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 no. And it's not and something you should tolerate. I'm not talking about those things where you are impacted negatively. I'm talking about those smaller instances where someone comes along and sees someone they perceive as having low self-esteem and decides, oh, I can kick you because you're not going to do anything because okay, you have low sure. self-esteem. Then be specific because I would agree with that. Like you, because someone does not know how to value themselves does not mean you get to treat them poorly, right? Like, yeah, yeah I agree with you. Can we, hold on, could we stay there for a second? Because mm -hmm. for one thing, one thing that I wanted to clarify is that it's not empowering to sleep with a bunch of people. The power comes in when it comes to you being able to decide for yourself what it is that you want to do. Whether it's not be with anyone or be with a bunch of people, you deciding for yourself. Because we're talking about sleeping with a lot of people in order to quote unquote appease men. Why are we talking about not sleeping with anyone in order to appease somebody? That doesn't happen too? Okay, so that's one thing. For another thing, I feel like you would have to like out, okay, here's the overarching issue. Let me put it this way. And this is what I was kind of alluding to. I did a little bit of research and I found what is called the, I'm gonna call it the H-archy, right? And it has from top down, um, and I sent you the link to, I don't know if you wanna show the visual, you really don't have to. It's a, it shows you from top down, it, it categorizes, Ex workers, right? And it, and the uh, what represents who's above the other is uh, their amount of contact with their clients and their interaction with police. At the very top is cam girls. Then you see strippers, sugar babies, dominatrices, indoor prostitutes, and then street prostitutes. Right? Wait, wait, now, wait, wait, wait. Let me pause. Sugar babies are mm -hmm. under strippers. Look, I didn't create this because <laughs> I said the same thing. <laughs> I, I, but like I, but I, I believe what makes it is remember it's um, police interaction as well. Sugar ah, babies don't ah. have any interaction with police, so it's both, right? Now, again, for the third time now, I'm specifying there's a difference between separating yourself from someone or just making a distinction and putting someone down. This is why when we and I've seen a few comments. I saw a few comments like, "Why are we caping for a whore?" We all look down on sex workers. I'm seeing those things, right? Cool. Here's the issue with that. If I were to say, oh, a street prostitute just got assaulted the other day and no one's listening to her, what would your reaction be? Because if you believe that that's appalling and if you believe that she should be treated the same way anybody else it would be treated, then you would not agree with this hierarchy. Why? Because the lower you are on the list, the less people regard you. And what happens when less people regard you? When you need help, you won't get it, or you're more likely to be victimized, right? So very, it's very, I don't do the, I'm not a whore, I'm not going to care for a whore, I don't do that, why? Because for one thing, and this is what Alicia was alluding to, however I see myself, another guy can see me a certain way. Now here, here's another question, right? Here's that hierarchy. Let's say if we do agree with this, you think the manosphere won't include any woman who's ever posted a thirst trap on Instagram on this list? Hmm? Or a woman who, let's say you're just that type, you you had a good dinner with a man and you're like, you know what, he's good looking, I've, I, I've done a little drinking, I'm gonna take him home. Now you a hoe too. This is the issue. Because what you're doing is you're, is you're following something that can come back to bite you. That is my issue with what Melissa Ford says. She's not a hoe, that's fine, right? Don't call yourself a hoe if you're not one. But to give into that system, you are doing yourself and other women a disservice. And that's, that's all I'm saying. That there is a potential and likelihood for... Um, devaluing of the human 
who engages in the behavior, I agree, is a problem, right? But mm -hmm. the question isn't whether or not you get to... It feels like in the aim to protect this person's humanity, we're saying that don't talk about the thing that they do. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm saying talk about the thing they do, but you have to recognize that if you're addressing them and or talking to them, that you have to show them respect. And there's a lack of respect. When there's a lack of respect, it shows. I, I think that's it, right? Like to level up single mom's point, like it's not about like, sure. Even when you were asking earlier, theme, it's like you asked, like, are we just saying like, oh, we should just be fine with it. some people. It's not it's not OK. Right. And, and some people's eyes. That's fine. Right. And and I think um, even when you're when I'm thinking, thinking about like spiritually. Right. Or religion wise. Right. Like, yes, religion has taught me that that's not something you should do. Right. Like it, it that's what I was taught. And so but even still, even if that is my belief that I should not do that. Right. Like that has no bearing. Like I'm not going to be the person. Like, oh, I don't do that. Because I know, I know the repercussions of that action. I, I think, I think we're looking at this at a very, um, pra like I guess, like uh, logical. I don't know. That's the word that comes to mind, like logical sense. But I, I, but in in my mind, I know that my response weighs heavier than what it than just that those words. Like my words mean something. The intention behind it means something. It is violence. It is it is being complicit or or allowing people to be violent, whether in speech or in action or deed to other people. And so to protect other women, I'm not about to put them down, even if I don't want to sleep around, even I, if I don't want to engage in whatever, if, I, if I'm not, if people will call me a prude or whatever, like, that's fine. But it's just like, I think, <laughs> I think the, the, the worst harm, excuse me, is not the person being called a prude. Well, as a woman, as a woman, I'm in my mind, sorry, I'm going back and forth. It doesn't matter. <laughs> as a woman, it doesn't matter. You could, you could call yourself a prude or you can call yourself a sex worker. It don't matter. You're a woman. You're there for men's enjoyment, right? And pleasure. And so for me, I understand that. And because I don't want any harm to come to other women, I'm just kind of like, whether she calls herself an H or not, whether she calls herself a B or not, that's my sis. I love her. I'm going to treat her well, period. Like it, it doesn't, I don't. And so for me, Melissa responding was not responding well. It was not responding with love. It was not responding with respect. It was, it was with the intention to harm somebody. Like the intention was to harm someone's reputation. And I think I can't, I can't move from that. Like, so the, the, the lexicon that comes out of the church, unfortunately, when it comes to women around this, is that um, the lack of accountability to other women highlights um, an unwillingness to confront bad behaviors by women in the quote unquote sisterhood. Um, do you think that is a fear critique or what are, how do you respond to it to that critique? Can you re, can you reframe that? Can you that there is a lack the willing the unwillingness to say this is bad and what you're doing is bad and it actually does not help or enhance um, the the position of womanhood right like as if that's your burden um, if you want to take it there um, that that shows an unwillingness to hold other women accountable for what you believe to be bad behavior? I, I think it has to do with what she believes is bad behavior, right? Like, I, I think I don't get that. I don't get the right to tell other people what they do with themselves, with their lives. That's not my job. Mm. My job is to, my job, number one, depending on where we're coming from, right? Like, are, I can't hold you accountable to something you don't agree to, right? So if, if you're saying I reject this, then I have nothing to hold you accountable so to. So mm -hmm. then if there is no standard for, operation um generally for men and women how do we know when people are acting out of order obviously without the the law can can i say this what? one part real quick i'm sorry i, I think mm -hmm. to, to that first question what i what i really want to get to the heart is like the heart of it right like no. we can talk about the action we can talk about you sleeping around or whatever what's what what is what is the what is the heart of it and i think the heart of the reason why anybody does anything is what I'm concerned about, right? So like, I think, you know, e even in terms of like, I don't I don't see, I don't even see sex work as the same as like theft. That's not the same for me. Like, yeah. and I also don't believe that all crime is wrong. That, that's just where I stand. Yeah. Like just because it's criminal, using your crime does you. not mean that's wrong. So like for me, when you're stealing something from somebody, you are you are violating them, right? Like mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's some sort of disrespect happening. When two consenting adults 
are agreeing to do something together, like, and, and this is what we're agreeing on, that is very different to me. Okay, How I feel about this it. This is where I was going with it. The problem is, I don't know that this is consensual. Mm -hmm. And the reason I disagree with Melissa is that I think Melissa is attacking the wrong person. I think these men are abusing power and a desperate woman who needs access to some degree for safety. We're talking about someone who was abused through their childhood. We're talking about someone who essentially said, I gave my body away because they were just going to take it. The idea that that shaped anything about your decision making means that this might be someone who needs help and these men were abusing her it it's hard and i don't want to infantilize her by the way fyi but it, it feels very difficult to not take issue with men having access to her body and using her the way that they have without reconciling the reality of her one her upbringing but two the fact that she's literally saying I just gave it to whoever asked because uh, they were going to take it anyway. Like that is a bizarre mindset. Like, like that. I mean, that, it's that a is... it's a survival instinct. It's a survival mode. She's going into that and rationalizing it to yeah. protect herself. Yeah. And I think that although these men are abusive, and I'm speaking from like not to infantilize her, right? Yes, she had a certain childhood. Right. But at some point in your adulthood, you're making decisions. Yeah. Not the decision to be taken advantage of, but this is the industry that she put herself in. There are right. plenty of people that go through foster care and have been abused that go down a different route. They may go the education route or may start businesses, you know, so it, I do not fault her for being vulnerable in an industry full of predators, right? Yeah. But I think the responsibility of it was like, I decided to be in this industry. I knew what it was. And based on that, I made decisions on survival. Not to say that it's her fault because these men are just disgusting. But, but I mean, she does have some like, responsibility of, you know, making adult decisions. So as someone who is very in, very invested in articulating agency, it would be absolutely hard to fully conceptualize this in the way we think about agency with Cassie Case just came out, right? And so mm -hmm. the way in which power operates sometimes is very insidious. And I don't think... The, the reason why I pivoted when um, Alicia brought up patriarchy earlier is because that's where I want to end. Because that's what the misogyny and control of women's body and access to women ultimately, I think, is the problem where women are used and discarded as a general matter in society. And it's increasingly so and amplified in an industry like hip hop, right? where women are literally seen and used as props. And while we can say um, they made decisions, we are saying that and we're judging from a position of extreme privilege. Um, and I don't know necessarily that we have that right. I mean, we're going to do it, right? We judge. That's what we do. But I think my grace to her and her experience, and even watching her last night talk about some of this and reflecting on how um, she didn't fully understand how she was being taken advantage of and trying to warn people. Now, I have a better appreciation, because reading the book didn't feel like she cared about other women. It felt like she was just writing her experience and like, girl, I did it. Um, I'd like to then, point something out, though, about... Yeah. I'd like to point something out about these women, like currently, if you go to their social media today and look at who they present themselves as, it, you know, somebody would say, oh, but Lisa's still working. Yeah, she is. She's still working the same way she was working before. Meanwhile, Elizabeth is into art and she's a multi, you know, best-selling author and she's working on another book and everything like go to their Instagram pages. 
So this idea of labeling people, like I said, for me, it's more so about how you are approaching people. The person that Elizabeth is today was with her and inside her during that time. And Melissa could have chosen to spoke to that woman and got to know that or not, you know, whatever. But this idea that because you've done these things or you you're only at this point in your life in terms of your paradigm, I get to treat you this way and classify. Yeah, you can. All right, but so you don't know who you're talking to. I obviously, man, but I don't have a problem with Melissa disagreeing and vocalizing her disagreement in the most overt way she can. Like, I, I don't. But you guys will have your own opinion on that. My issue is not that. My issue, I think, was articulated here, and I ignored it because I didn't want to address it till now, um, is that she aimed at the wrong person or the wrong thing. Her problem and her positioning isn't about um, how this woman is making her look. It's about a system that treats her a, a specific way and then disregard women, use them and then disregard them and make them objects in this way. And I think for me, I, obviously, it doesn't matter what I believe here, but it doesn't matter that she think, oh, your morality is less than mine. I think it's disgusting. That's not the problem. The problem is a group of men who are taking advantage of women. And I don't think we get I don't think Melissa thinks she can fight the system. In fact, I think she benefits from the system and she's not about to, she, she wants, she likes her privilege in the system. Look at how the community views and treats Lori Harvey with no personal knowledge of how she really operates. They have made this woman out to be a, you know what, no tell, no tell all book needed, yeah. And just, exactly. to on, just to just to add on to this, we you briefly mentioned Corinne's history, her her abuse, her trauma, what led her into being so promiscuous, if you will, and she's still being called a whore by women. Is that not emblematic of the huge issue here and the role that we as women play in our own demise? Is it not? Yeah. Okay. But I think the issue, the, the only issue, the issue I have here sometimes is that it feels like there isn't, there, if there is a standard for kind of how to operate in the world, um, that that is rejected. But I don't know what the standard should be, and I don't venture to explain what womanhood should aspire to be, and I think that might differ from woman to woman. Um, in the fearness that I'm trying to put forward, I'm realizing that for me, while I don't know what manhood is, I know what I shame men for, but I also don't think women should be shaming women for how they engage with their bodies. So it's a very strange place to be where there is a double standard that I'm picking up on very obviously yeah i mean i've reconciled it in my head but um yeah can i, I just one thing that i wrote down i was like there's no winning right like this 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 competition that we're in this like oh she's an h and i'm not and she's whatever and i'm not like there's it's a losing game it's a losing game because the prize are a bunch of people who want to exploit us either way, right? And and so I think like it's like what are we really fighting for? Like let's be let's be so for like I, I don't understand. Again, you do what you want. You do you do what you what feels good to you. As in, and I don't mean what feels good. You do what feels right to you, right? And and we can get to a whole discussion about that. But as far as it's not hurting anybody else, <laughs> like you you decide what works for you. We're in America, right? So even when we talk about like morality. We're in a melting pot, supposedly. Um, and I think that just because I may believe something doesn't mean that other people have to believe that. Like, yeah. and, I, and I think that we're we're doing ourselves a disservice, as I said earlier, but like for we're putting energy into something that we cannot win. Like, in order to win, we have to stop playing the game because we all lose. Like it, it just to me, it's silly. It's it's a silly, I understand why, and I get it because women want to be protected, they want to be seen as valuable. Like since birth, from birth, women, girls, excuse me, since birth, girls are devalued. Girls are criticized. Girls are told to, to close your legs and to sit up straight and to walk this way and don't look at, don't let a man harm you. Like we're, we're doing all these gymnastics trying not to be harmed by men. 
like and by patriarchy or people who uphold patriarchy, right? And that's the problem, but we're fighting each other. We're not the problem. We're not the enemy of each other. Like we're all just trying to survive. And I think that if we put more energy into actually loving ourselves and loving each other, and I'm always, that's my, that's my ethic, love ourselves and love each other. That solves everything. That solves everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Not to mention <laughs> one, just one little thing that I wanted to say um is that it isn't it just in so very interesting that the very men we do live in a patriarchy and that's why i'm saying this the very men who are dictating to us what is respectable and and like non-respectable behavior for women are the very ones that are paying these ex-workers for their services mm. so the very people that are putting these women down and we're following their lead are the ones that are keeping their pockets lined yeah this is what Alicia was saying too. From the moment you were born a girl, a game is being played. Women are trophies in the game of men. Um, not only trophies, but like objects to be used and discarded um, and devalued. Assessive and self-assured women. Do, when you say like this, I... I think about Megan the Stallion here, actually. But anyway, the size of unselfish word women are um, the parish. The pariah conversation. I think it's women that seem to be. I think it's women that seem to be aware that they could harness what it is that these men are trying to take from them. That yeah, is the, the threat. Yeah, no, Whether the they're pariah, good at it or not, it's the awareness that they can. The pariah, though, I think is correct. Because, again, I read this last sentence, and I don't know why my ADHD... I don't have ADHD. Let me not say that. Um, decisive and self-assured women being a pariah is true. And when I think about what happened with Megan the Stallion, um, I feel like it stems from a hatred of women who are like it seemingly, because she might not be, seemingly un in control of their sexuality. Um, but yeah. I really I think we have oh, to, sorry. I was just gonna say I think we as a society need to evolve to start thinking independently. And when I say that, I mean, like Alicia was saying, just because you think about something or you believe something doesn't mean someone else has to. So we're here because we have this group think. And if you really sit back and reflect on things, again, outside of people harming people, what does another woman having multiple partners has to do with you. Are you affected by that in any way outside of societal ramifications? If you don't want to sleep around, choose that for yourself. But why do you need to degrade and look down upon a woman who does? Just reflect on that. And can... And can I, I, I love that, Coco. I love that. And and themes, I, I don't know, if, but somebody commented and said, male-centered women are victims of misogyny, but they're not the source of it. And I think, I think that's the thing too, when I'm talking about like not being the enemies of each other. I don't even, I don't even hate women who are male identified. I don't, I get it. I get it. They're trying to survive, right? But I, what I want them to understand is like, that's not going to save you. Like you centering men mm -hmm. is going to destroy you. It's going to destroy your confidence. It's going to, it's like, you you not centering yourself like you not centering yourself at the heart of it all like that's that's going to destroy the other person but also you like you don't win in this either and i think that's my point that's anyway but yeah mm -hmm. i totally agree with that because it's like even if you are the good girl that waited till you got married goes to church every sunday cooks your man a hot meal three times a day you're you're first in line for abuse so, so you you trying to other women in a way that creates hierarchy within women and perpetuating patriarchy, like you said, it's not going to save you. It's not going to save us. It actually causes and creates more harm and puts us further away from safety. What say you then about the way in which... Um, 
other women police women about like not being with men and being upset with women for being with men like how do you engage with that because on one what hand do you, what do you mean? so you know how the conversation now is very specifically about let women choose and like let them do whatever they want to do um mm-hmm. right however there's another conversation about like well women if you don't do this it does it go both ways essentially like are you saying women should have the autonomy and should not be judged harshly um by other women for either going to or not going to men i think it works always like if a woman wants to choose to be a trad wife, do that. I'm not going to do that. But if that's what you want to do and, and you are choosing that and that makes you happy, I love that for you. If you want to be a stripper and that makes you happy and you're not harming anybody, I love that for you. If you want to be like me and go to law school and be a lawyer, I, I'm, I support you too. I think women deserve the opportunity to choose in a world that's going to encourage her to be who she is, even if we don't agree with what she's doing. Yeah. So I'm going to say, because I'm going to open the panel in a minute, if you guys are okay with this. Um, But I'm going to say that um, I needed to kind of press you all on this and not just let you talk, talk, talk um, in that, I think they're the men are saying, "Oh no, you don't you d- grill us." Um but what I can say and I will say I'm very always very surprised when I shouldn't be um pleasantly so by the the depth with which you all have thought about your ideas. Um I think it's 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 always refreshing cuz like I'm I was trying to keep a straight face, but I'm having fun in so far as the conversation is having a bunch of layers and depth to it, and I don't always get to have that. So I appreciate that, and thank you all. So I will open. We the don't get triggered now. by you asking us questions after <laughs> we've said something. We process and give Lord, you an answer. And clarify. In the deep <laughs> core, I was like, "Now he know he getting on my nerves." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, because like. It always feels like whenever I'm asking a question, it feels like an attack. But you guys were very, very good about like responding to it and, and engaging. So this was actually really nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for having us. I appreciate it. Because like, if we don't have these conversations and there is no pushback and there is no you know, new information to consider and new perspective to consider, how are we going to progress? We cannot progress. We're just dealing with what's comfortable and saying whatever doesn't rock the boat. Like, we're going to need to capsize to figure out how to get out the damn ocean. So, let's do it. Not y'all keep and you know I'm all for. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I'm all for having conversations with women that are tough and about, you know, tough things and shameful things. But the one thing I say, well, I say a lot of things, but one of the things I say all the time is there's a need for women to know that they can put down their armor. And so ultimately for me, this conversation is about knowing, not even knowing who to put your armor down with, because we intuitively know, but knowing, being able to recognize whether or not you are a person that someone can put their armor down around. And if you are of the mind where you think you're that person, but you're not having that experience, this is probably why. And can I, I can I also say like, as a person who grew up in like Christian, under Christian, whatever, this is something that I'm, that I'm learning, right? Like this is even how I'm thinking, I'm always open to being like, you could be wrong. It's possible to be wrong. <laughs> like it's possible to not have the wide scope and the breadth of experiences. And I think for me, because I understand that, it's not like these are my thoughts and opinions, but my thoughts and opinions change with new information like everybody's talking about. So I think having the conversations, as long as it's being had in a good faith and you're not trying to waste my time, like I'm all for that. You know what I'm saying? So like, so I love, I love having conversations like this. So thank you for having us. I'm really appreciative. Oh, I, you, you know, I don't know if I've ever said this to you, but I absolutely adore speaking with you. Um, well, it's always a, 
pleasure and privilege for me. Um, and if you haven't gone to Level Up Single Moms channel, please go, Coco the Attorney. Please go, Alicia, please go. I tell Coco the Attorney, by the way, this is not just to Alicia. I said it specifically to her because of some of her videos that I've been watching really um, lately. They've really touched me. Um, and I just like how thoughtful you are generally. Um, but I like talking to all of you. And Coco, the attorney, we are sparring partners, apparently. So, period. Um, level up will always drag me. Period. In it's giving I, opposing counsel. Yeah, yeah, DJ and I have a date, but she is <laughs> kidding. Let me stop. Let me not put that out there. Um, Lala, go ahead. Oh, hello? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Oh, hi. I just want to say I really appreciate the discussion you guys had today. And I wanted to say, like, I agree 100 um, percent with everything Alicia said. And I think um, who was the other one I was talking? She had like kind of a deeper voice, like a. Like Wait, a the smooth... sultry voice. Is it the yeah. smooth? Mo yeah, it's smooth. Talker. Right? <laughs> it's, talker. it's definitely giving yeah, mahogany pink. Yeah, I it agree is with definitely everything. giving mahogany pink. I agree with everything she was saying. Y'all got to stop. <laughs> Oh, uh, and I understand with like your your points that you was making themes and all that, but I agree with what they were saying as far as like trying to create a safe space for women, you know, like all women. And I agree that there definitely is a hierarchy based in the male gaze and you know male validation that really needs to be eradicated amongst women, like because the only ones that benefit is our men. Like I've been on both sides of the fence. Um, like I was, I agree. Well, not agree. I identify, um, a little bit of with Corinne's story, like that, you know, I used to like strip back in the day. Um, and uh, it's really like, I, as far as like being, you know, essayed as like a child and as an adult, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you, you don't, you don't win because being essayed as like a child and an adult, both times it was like I did fit in like boys and men <clears throat> even to this day like them not even knowing that I used to strip even to this day like men do this thing called triangulization where they try to like make you out to be the Madonna in the group and then the other girls they try to make them out to be the whores in the group and they don't know like oh, like, you know, that I used to strip back in the day. So it's just like, even before that, like they would always try to put me in the Madonna category, but I never believed in that. Like I never bought into, I was better than other girls, yada, 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 the BS, like the triangulization. And they would always get mad. Like I was the one that was always fighting boys and they would get mad at me because I wouldn't go along with their BS because like I would see what they would try to do. And like, I always noticed that like girls would like, either be really quiet, you know, I'm, I'm calmed down now. Like I'm grown now, whatever. But like when I was younger, I didn't really care. I used to like be um like the one that would be loud about like my disagreements with um boys or whatever. And they would then try to like calm me. They would try to again the triangulization, they would try to calm me down and be like, Oh, but see, but see, you dress like this or whatever, you ain't dressed like her. But they didn't like the fact that I would be like a girl's girl and still defend the um the 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 stranger basically. Like they would get mad that I was defend the stranger. So it's like I agree with Alicia in the fact that the Madonnas, the, the women that identify and see themselves as the Madonnas of the world, it's all out of survival because you think that you're about to be safe with this dude complimenting you and then trying to get you to agree with his degeneracy. Like they'll make little comments of like, see girls like that, like, you know, they deserve to get this. They deserve this and they deserve that. And I think um Miss Coco said earlier, like, you know, what does what does someone else doing with themselves and them presenting themselves however they want to have to do with you controlling yourself, like self-control? And that will always be like a point that I would make. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm with you. I think I do actually, uh, when it comes to triangulation, um, I think that is a part of it, like the constant need to prove that you are not like those other girls, which um, men weaponize against you. Just, yeah change your behaviors yep yep and they were all they would always do that and it was like i think i think because i was essayed like as a child or whatever i never believed in the whole madonna horror complex because i'm like nigga i was oh sorry i was considered a quote-unquote madonna <laughs> but you still essayed me you get what i'm saying like you like i was still essay so everything that like the whole triangulization thing never worked on me as a kid because it was just like 
And even now, because it was just like, you, I played the role or appeared as the role. I appeared as the role, but I was still essayed. Like I was essayed and I'm wearing pants. I didn't wear mini skirts. I didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? It, but I was still essayed. So it, I feel like it works on certain women and certain women are their experiences it has protected them like what alicia was saying their experience i don't judge them i don't i don't judge the madonnas of the world because it's like your experience has kept you safe in your life in your your life but i also don't really care for the madonnas of the world because it's like hmm. you trying to project that onto the other women that do appear as you know modest looking you know what i'm saying they are modest dressing and they are modest appearing like how some of the other women were saying, like, you know, I don't do those things, but I'm not judging the other women that do. You know what I'm saying? But they were not protected. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm in that category of, yeah, I did, quote unquote, everything right, but I wasn't protected. You get what I'm saying? So now what? And then it's like the, the Madonnas of the world, they don't really have any rebuttal against that. They just hold fast onto their beliefs. And now that makes it safe for all. That makes it unsafe for all women. And that's where I live my plane. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I'm so sorry for your experience. Oh, I, I, no, thank, no, it's okay. Yeah, thank you. No, that's all right. It's fine. No, no, I, <laughs> I've done yeah. therapy and all that and everything. But yeah. <laughs> Not all that and everything. I appreciate yeah, but... <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Penelope, uh, Coco got chocolate in her voice. Smooth. <laughs> Period. You should have added an F to that. Uh, go ahead, Penelope. Hi. I'm just getting over a cold. So um, sorry if my voice is more nasally than usual but um i love this discussion and um thank you all for your contributions uh this is really thought provoking for me i think it's really interesting because right now i'm very much on attack mode for the not all men um conversation because I'm like all of you are all that man and if you're not like you hope that that man exists so that you can keep the hope alive that you're the unicorn right um and so it's really interesting seeing this conversation on the other side of the fence of women being like we're not that girl not that woman like not all women it's not us right when the truth is is if not all men is really all men, then all, not that girl is all of us girls, right? Like we're all on the same playing field in term, in, in a, in a game that is right. Um, in a game where the odds are already stacked against us. Um, so yeah, I just, I guess I was curious. I don't know if your mic is going in and out. Um, I, just, I think, though... Sorry, I, is... I kept getting a call. Oh. Um, my bad. Um, so what I'm saying is, is not it's not that, like, we don't all have differentiating characteristics. It's not that, you know, we don't all have different qualities. But what I'm saying is that, like, we all are subject to the same danger. And for us to be pitted against one another is, like it's really doing the job of you know the man <laughs> that guy whatever for him and so like that, on that though like also separating yourself from a certain image doesn't mean you believe others should be harmed and i actually think this right. is important um because i i think sometimes we take on the responsibility of the world um Sure, and I yeah. don't know, actually, as I said, I don't know if it's about, because I think what Alicia was saying was that at some point that the response, there is some responsibility of how you approach rejecting an image because you understand the consequence of such a rejection. So yeah. your word choice and how you engage with it is very important. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you, R, but I also agree with uh, Alicia. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but. No, absolutely. And I, I totally respect people wanting to, you know, make a distinction between themselves and others. But personally, in the, I've been put in that situation more recently as like a recovering cool girl 
Um, and now <laughs> I'm like way more inclined to say, oh, you know what? If I had legs like that, my ass would be out too. You know what? Like, I'm not that girl, but look, I'm not above it. I've done crazier stuff, you know, in my heyday too. And it's, it's, it does not mean that that person deserves punishment just because, you know, she's feeling herself just because she got a lot of dudes, you know, on her phone because, you know, if I had it like that, maybe I would be like, that too. you know what I'm saying? Just because I don't get paid for my sex. If I could look, it's not, it doesn't have to be anything crazy and you can still say, Hey, that's just not my life. That's not my experience. So I really appreciate um, everybody on the panel who's, um, you know, made that distinction clear as well. I think there's an opportunity for all of us to win. And I think any woman who is sharing her story, whether or not she's made good choices or bad, I think that helps us. I think we're all uniquely positioned, even with our shame, even with our shameful backgrounds or stories or whatever. I think we're all uniquely positioned to help the next person to do better and have better. And if we want good things for other for ourselves, we don't have the responsibility of of saving everybody, but it behooves us to be kind to other women, even if we don't. Isn't know. this inconsistent with level up and the idea? Um, so when I went to the equivalent to charm school, <laughs> there's this idea, and it's it's a, it's a very elitist idea that you have to hold yourself and the people around you and that you associate with to a very high standard, and you have to meet that. Um, and so in that way, wanting access to a certain group and wanting to be seen a certain way by a certain set of people does in fact require, actually, that you reject certain behaviors Is is that to me? Yeah, I mean to anyone. But it, it and is that a bad thing? Is that a bad want? Because if you if you say no, it's not a bad want. Then those women cannot be in community with other women. Like they just can't. It literally can't happen. For me, I think it just all goes back to why we are considering it bad behavior. Who determined that, and what is the reason why? Right. And and that's it's going to differ from person to person. You're going to have some people who sees SEX as just an experience that should be had between two consenting people. There are going to be some people of the belief that it should only be had between uh, a married like married folk. Like our definitions are going to be different. And thus, if you're in that position of power where you <laughs> develop this charm school, of course, what you expect of their students is going to match what you believe. I'm I'm asking everyone to really think about it for themselves. Why you have the perception of of sex that you do? Like oh, because patriarchy, in because patriarchy, male dominance, and power. We're in the mm -hmm. system, and mm -hmm. there are people who want to live well in the system and uh, want mm -hmm. access in the system. Are they wrong for wanting that life? If you say no then they, by default, can reject you. Again, life. I feel like, I think it's a difference between does it make sense versus is it right or wrong, right? And so if you're... Oh, this if is you're, interesting. Go ahead, oh, like me, what I just said? No, because I'm going oh, to be a black man in the racist system now in a second. But yeah, I at least want to, I, I just, I, I think that distinction is very important. Like, okay, do, this is, <laughs> I don't even want to open up this can of worms, but like the losing weight for a certain gaze, right? Yeah, it's God. all, no, 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 no. I, I'm already gone. Let I'm already gone. No. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I brought I it up know. just as an example, cause and effect, logic, what makes sense versus whether or not something is morally right or wrong different conversations that's all I wanted. that's all i was trying to get at no no i get you so here's the thing it seems to s correct me cut me off please alicia get off mute and drag me when you're ready but it seems like in the patriarchy 
you are saying do not capitulate do not feed into the patriarchy let women do, do what they need to do it's fine don't do it right for a lot of people that does not afford you the kinds of access in the corporate world um in relationship in, in status with like rich successful men it doesn't afford you the kind of social mobility because of patriarchy right and you all are saying don't judge them for that for not wanting to play the patriarchal game right am i agree are we agreed you, know you know where i'm going right I, if you don't know let me go there so when black men are like girl i don't want to work in this system this is a racist system i don't gotta do it and y'all are like we understand that it's racism but you can try harder and you can work harder and they're like but we don't wanna is it fear then to say y'all should y'all should work in the system? It's fine, play by the rules, or get to what where you want to get to, whatever. Because we're not about to overthrow the system. Is that fear? Because on one hand, you're like, don't uh, operate as women in this patriarchy, overthrow the patriarchy. Um, but black men is like, girl, go forth and succeed in this system. You want to know what I think is important? What I think is important is that is we're not necessarily saying <laughs> walk away from patriarchy, like burn it to the ground, all those things. You wouldn't even be able to do that unless you're like thriving within it. What I'm talking about, at least, and, and ladies, please like um, let me know if you're in agreement. It's the idea of better navigating the patriarchy to the benefit of women as a collective. It's about doing what is within your own ability and what is within your own realm. Even when you are othering yourself, being very mindful of the verbiage you choose because oh, yeah. you know how, yeah. So, so, so right. we're not necessarily trying to disband patriarchy. We're trying to better exist within it. All right. I feel like it's a disbanding because if you're saying don't I'm trying to dismantle it, so. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was gonna say I want to burn it down. <laughs> Yeah, that's not going to happen today or tomorrow. So I think there is a more conscientious way to exist within it. All right. So you is should live agree? within it and you should try to succeed in it, right? Like live your best life. You in have it, no right? choice. I'm trying to succeed. Choice, I'm not going to say that I'm trying to succeed in patriarchy or at patriarchy or anything like that, but I am trying to succeed in general. And I recognize that I may have to operate within it or in tandem to it at different right. points in my life if I cannot. It's but, like um, getting parts of capitalism it. here. I don't and having to exist this. within it. I don't truly believe this, but the oh, was someone talking? Sorry. Oh, I was just saying, it's kind of like when you are making a critique of capitalism, but like you have to participate in it. Oh no, I am fully it. aware of this. I am fully aware of this. White supremacy, subjugation, slavery, Jim Crow, all of that put black people at a disadvantage. But I have a thing where I'm like, even though we're here, there is agency enough so us black men can get up and we can do better in the system. But if if patriarchy, which is a part of, but we're going to treat it separately now, in relation to women, means that you don't get to judge women for how they operate in this because autonomy and all of that, and patriarchy is the problem and not their individualized behavior. Couldn't but part of that, that doing wait, wait, better is going wait, wait, to be second. recognizing. Couldn't that be used to justify black men's behavior? Like they don't want to engage in this racist system. And so, period. God, DJ, I saw you. <laughs> because, like, no, that's not why. It's not. It's not <laughs> them standing up for what is right. It is laziness. <laughs> no. <laughs> so no. I, yeah. I'm sorry. I reject. I reject this. It I, is not. It is not a fight against patriarchy. It is not. <laughs> and we all know that. It is, it is a fight against racism and white supremacy, refusing to use your body to add 
to to this capitalistic society saying stay home and rest we have worked so hard as black men we have given our bodies blood sweat and tears to the system and therefore we get to rest if y'all get to rest and don't get judged why should we be judged i okay well i'm for tearing down the patriarchy that's just the, that's just but i obviously know like i exist in it and it and it i have to navigate it but i what I have a problem with are these men who say that, say men who think this way, right? Who does it fall back on? Like when when you're when you're failing to show up, the women, don't... no, it, it falls back. Right, pretty clear. It falls back on the women. Okay, and so but technically, still rejecting the system. Right, they're still and... rejecting the system. So that's yes. what's important: the rejection of oh white supremacy and, and um, capitalism. It is a reject. Me not getting a job is a is a it is political. It is political speech. Oh, is so, it? Okay. I think I think that's true. Okay. Like we all have degrees of privilege, right? So, like for me, I can say that you know, as a black woman, taking rest and refuge is, is l- reparations, right? I can I feel entitled to say that some days, right? And I also know when I have to do work around areas where I do have privilege. So it's not the same thing as you know, white people taking Juneteenth off, which I don't agree with. It's like, as a man, yes, if you are Black, you definitely have some um, leeway in terms of participating in the system that is harming you. But as a man, you also have a duty to uplift women around you. And if you're not going to do both, it's kind of like, Either get your coin up or destroy the patriarchy, but you can't. If you, you know. say as a man you have a duty to blah, as a woman you have a duty to blah. Uh, yes, in but in a in a patriarchy, it's a different duty, I think. Personally, yeah, and y'all are rejecting that duty. The duty is disgusting. It's about purity. That... It's about um not not being loud. It's about being soft, sweet, and whatever submissive. No, no, no. no. As as. <laughs> For us, to, in in dismantling a patriarchy, our duty is to support other women. You to are not tell our attempting stories. to dismantle the patriarchy if you're saying, as a man, you have a duty to do this in a patriarchy. No, you're not. No, you're not as, a man, as a man, as a man, you are in a different power. To dismantle, you have a duty to dismantle it and help other women. Or get your coin up. Those are the options. No, you, wanna... you, I feel you can't have your cake and eat it too, period. <laughs> I, I hear no, that that's thing. the goal. We want to dismantle the parts of patriarchy that don't suit us. A la carte, ah! yes. Let's no, just, let's just be not, real. It's not even let's that. Just no, <laughs> this is going to be a clip and you're going to be all over no! the internet. You're going to be all no! over the <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Matter of fact, I'm gonna stand by it you. because they they want just the best parts of patriarchy too. They don't want to pay uh, for the meal on the first date. They don't want to hold open doors. They don't want to do what they're supposed to do. So yeah, I'm gonna want it both ways for me too. Period. Yeah. Period. Purity for purity for what? Purity for who? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> you can keep. Hey, girl, <laughs> I am messy. What do you mean keep the flags cute? I. <laughs> But you actually, y'all need to blame Penelope because I wasn't even thinking about this until she pointed it out um, inadvertently. What? But, <laughs> oh yeah, you did it. We blame you. <laughs> I, as a as a black man in 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 the system. I get to put off responsibility. No, 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 That's no. no. Here's what I said. As this. a black person, I think that we deserve to seek out reparations. We deserve to seek out rest we deserve to seek out you know representation in ways that elevate us as black people i think as men you also have that and the duty to dismantle the patriarchy or use your coin to help women where does my duty to dismantle the patriarchy comes from being a man in a patriarchy like what it was what why can't women dismantle the patriarchy we are are and it's harder because we're women. So they don't have access to the same power. You're using patriarchy to tell men that they have a duty to dismantle the patriarchy. The same same way white people have a duty to like, you know, do stuff. (laughs) Sorry. I'm really thinking about Juneteenth and and, um, Black History Month right now and my white co-workers who just kick their feet up. The same way that white people have a duty within 
white supremacy and whatever to dismantle with their privilege is the same way that men have a duty to dismantle with their privilege. I, as like a English speaking, uh, two college educated parents person, I've been kind of skinny all my life, which like, you know, I'm trying to get thicker, but that's beside the point. Um, you know, like I find it as my duty to say, Hey, look, me being skinny isn't even cute. And like, if it like I makes me like better than the next person, I owe it. But I feel some... like you're still flexing. But I'm, <laughs> I no, I, like, yeah, unfortunately, I'm getting, unfortunately, I'm it getting is, a vibe. <laughs> unfortunately, it's a flex in this in this white, uh, you know, thin loving country, whatever. Unfortunately, it is. But what I'm saying is like, like there are certain privileges that we have to admit that we have, regardless, and we have to try and you know dismantle whatever privilege that is while we have it so as men you're not absolved just because you're black as no, women you're you. not absolved just because you're white or like as a white person you're not absolved just because you're a woman so you th do you think black men should participate in racism and and white supremacy do I think that black women should participate? Black in... men, black men should participate in uplifting and upholding white supremacy. I no, I don't think that's okay, their. So they should stay at home and not go to work. No, I think that's that they I should heard. participate <laughs> in a patriarchy <laughs> by using their patriarchal power to uplift people without that. I heard they should stay at home and not work. So that's what I heard. So. Okay. <laughs> I can't tell. I feel you. like they're love upholding, love they're upholding the at your worth. They are upholding the patriarchy by staying home. So let's talk about that. No. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> they're not. leaning into women empowerment and um, allowing women to lead. They're resting. Quite the spin. <laughs> I reject <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I am taking y'all's worldview and I'm applying to the men's. Um, all this conversation about age culture, the age knows their bodies very well. <laughs> Nothing will ever come between a man and his happiness. <laughs> Period. Um, yes, it's so. uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was saying yes, ultimate enigma. Absolutely. Um, what about the fact that Jesus befriended Mary Magdalene, a known prostitute at the time? She later changed, then changed her life due to the respect and kindness Jesus showed. So intrinsic in this is the idea that it is bad. <laughs> this story is saying what you are doing is bad. And once you get close to Christ, you change your life for the better by not doing that. And then I have a different perspective. Oh, give me your perspective. I taught this this in Bible study um, against the will of the, the pastors. I think that I thought the kids needed to know. Oh my God! Um, to what I to my point I made earlier about how you step to people and how you expect to interact with people. I think what people miss is the thing about Christ was Christ did not treat people. He treated people differently, but he treated them differently for different reasons. So, for instance, whereas regular people prior to Christ would treat the Pharisees and, you know, people in high positions of the world a certain way with a certain reverence, he came down and said, no, in some ways you're actually less than these people because of how you conduct yourselves. And so when it comes to him treating Mary Magdalene and her changing her life, I don't see it as a thing of, oh, because what that thing you were doing was bad i see it as a thing of oh you've taught me a new appreciation for myself and a new respect for myself so that i want to make decisions from a different place about how i use my body and my time i'm going to use it to serve your kingdom so you don't think he was saying he he who is without sin cast the first stone you didn't say you didn't think that he was saying that what she was doing was bad he was saying that if you have not sinned, then you can throw a stone at her. So I don't think it was a thing of saying that her sin was worse than your sin. I think it was a thing of saying that sin is universal to all of us. And so we should not trick ourselves into believing that yeah, any other sin is better than another. Change the fact that she thinks what she did was bad. 
It's not when it comes to sin, because even for me, when I read the Bible and they talk about sin, they talk about sin being inherent in us. The way I read sin, like, yes, technically you can classify it as bad and or you can just classify it as the nature of curiosity no, and no, desire. No, okay, classify. If the flesh is weak and bad and you should be you should fight your flesh as a Christian. Therefore, well now actually, but we're bad. talking so but I already told you before when it comes to that Bible, the Bible can get a bit sketchy with me because it was written by men, period. No, no, you know no. what I mean? Like my relationship. Th that's a different thing though. As it relates to the story, as it is interpreted around Mary Magdalene, what she did was considered bad. And when she became close to Christ, she changed her life for the better. And but tell me, show me cool. where he said, but show me where he said to her, what you're doing is bad or where he just spoke to her of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, and that's why I, she changed. The whole story is about transformation and being graceful to people in sin and not we, treating people in sin poorly. Oh, sorry, Alicia, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to ask, are we talking about, okay, because the sound, okay. Are we talking about Mary Magdalene? Or are we talking about the woman who Mary. was caught in the act of adultery? Uh, both. No. Oh, both. Okay, sorry. I missed, okay. But Mary Magdalene was a prostitute and they said it was bad. And it being bad, it she... Essentially, Jesus treating her like a human being that had value was important because people who were that way wasn't treated that way. Like people, people look down on them and the Christians look down on them generally. And so, wait, you're saying no, Alicia? No, no. I, I'm just saying I've never read that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute in the Bible. Right. I never, I mean, people... I know that it was implied. I know that it was implied by mm -hmm. other people and other people are like, if how could a woman have all this power? That kind of thing, right? Like, but but the story, I think when you're talking about throwing the stones, I'm thinking about, oh, we caught this woman in the act of adultery and these men want to stone her to death. And then they're like, and Jesus is like, first of all, the question should have been, where's the man? But the, but the thing is- Oh, yeah, like, yeah. I wasn't, saying, I wasn't saying that that story was about Mary Magdalene. I was oh, just yeah, talking I about I how- I figured that, figure that out. Okay, okay. I think it's important though, and again, I just feel like there are certain things that are missed. The that the value of the kingdom of Christ came from this notion of fruits of the spirit. You get what and I feel like even when the fruits of the spirit come, it's not so much a thing of, oh, what I was doing was bad. It becomes a new, you have different priorities. You have different priorities than just survival or vanity or, you know, whatever the reasons may be that people will do those types of things. So Jesus's value in her and in, in his influence, I believe, came from his willingness to treat her as wait, an wait, Let me read verbatim. Um, in Luke, 10 verse 39 they talked about the sinful woman um anointing jesus's feet right so okay even if scholars because i think scholars have said oh she was jesus's wife which there's no nothing to support that um scholars have said um that she was Jesus's mistress, and then some was like she was just a woman who Jesus found favor in that people said um, was a sinful. Sinful yeah. in this way, scholars have debated if it was that she was a prostitute or not, or was she a, like it is ambiguous, but she was sinful. Sinful is the word. <laughs> Uh, girl, sinful go mean uh, prostitution, but okay, go ahead in my mind, but uh, go ahead. I mean, what what is it you're looking for a response oh, I, to? No, no, no. I thought you said she wasn't, um, what she did, she wasn't considered wrong. And the lady who was caught in adultery, um, what, when Jesus said, he who is without sin, cast the first stone if that person was um not being sinful because they were and while jesus was being kind she it was in some ways it was showing how christians should show up for people who were sinful quote unquote 
in a, a kind of non-judgmental way and take care of them and show them Christ's way. But it didn't mean what they were doing was good. It means what you're doing is bad and you should become a good person, but I'm not going to condemn you in that way. I think it's important not to put words in Jesus's mouth in that sense, because when I think of the Bible and I think of the times where Jesus straight up said to somebody, you are wrong. He was talking to those people that were in high places that treated other people as less than them. I never heard him speak of people who were in like unfortunate situations or situations where they were looked down upon and say, you're in the wrong. That's why you are the way you are. You need to change. He solely spoke on the love of Christ and how it was available to them as well as much as anyone else. And so I feel like when we have those interpret, and I'm not, you know, I guess I can't say for certain that it wasn't technically considered bad, but it was considered bad, quote unquote, classifiably in the eyes of men. Whereas Jesus was like, none of that matters. You are God's child and his love is available to you as well. So I just, that stands out to me. Yeah. I mean, but that doesn't mean what you're doing is not bad. And you shouldn't be judged for it. Yeah, but if my Lord and Savior isn't harping on it, why should I? No, you can... It, it, so it's one thing to say, you've done something bad. As a Christian, I'm telling you, you did something bad, but I'm doing it in with grace, and I'm trying to correct you. The point at which you are like, okay, we are all God's children. I'm going to continue to do it. Then there's a problem there. Like, it's not like, oh, we are all sinners. I know what I'm doing is wrong and I'm going to continue to do it. Yeah, but I feel like when you've effectively, uh, when you, when the point of the whole idea of getting to know God's love happens to you, it's not about that aspect of it. You just change. You just, you just start loving yourself, whatever that means. If you weren't loving yourself before no, in a, true. in a different that's way. No, no, I'm that, saying in a different way. No, the, the way people are interpreting the, the, this part of the Bible is odd to me because the whole point is that you have a consistent and continuous kind of battle with your flesh. Even as you are baptized and you're closer to God, there is a sense that you won't want to do that which you've done that was sinful. However, it is going to be a constant struggle. It's not like I'm now a Christian and therefore all of the things that I used to enjoy, I don't think about it. You're going to constantly be sort of um, tempted. And actually, the temptation might be increased as mm -hmm. a Christian, biblically. You now need to not do it. Like, the whole point is to mm -hmm. not do and engage in sinful behavior. Okay. So, it is sinful, and you're expected to not engage in sinful behavior, biblically. Right. I mean, that's it. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean... <laughs> I'm because I'm trying to remember what it is we're speaking. Of. Like you're saying, generally that you she was doing something. She was doing she something was... wrong, and it might have not been prostitution. I think we I jumped the gun by calling it prostitution because in my mind it is prostitution. I didn't use the word prostitution when I taught it, but over time I, it became prostitution to me. But the demons being expelled from her, whatever, and. The idea is that you, even though he is kind to this person, the fact of his kindness to the person is to say, I know what you're doing is wrong or that you have been wrong, but you can change. That means what you are doing, you won't continue to do. Like that's the, yeah. the point of the story. Um, I, I think. But what I think you're doing is you're overemphasizing the wrong like yes okay she did something we can classify as wrong um but i think the lesson in it is we're so if we're supposed to be christ-like christ wasn't harping on that so we shouldn't harp on that you know like the whole goal is to be christ-like wait i'm so sorry wait, question wait, 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 wait. wait christ didn't harp on it because You've done the thing, you understand you're wrong, and you're changing. If you continue to do the thing, then that would be a problem. Sorry, go ahead, DJ. 
No, I could because I'm just not that I'm not that familiar with the story and I'm getting confused because a lot of people in the chat are saying like she I saw one person say that she was actually cheating on her husband. That's I completely we're, different. We're, we're, the way we did it, and I thank Alicia for pointing this out, like mm -hmm. we conflated two very different stories. One where Jesus said, he, is, he who is without sin cast the first stone where that woman was committing adultery, and mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene. Because Mary Magdalene, in my mind, is a prostitute, but it doesn't directly say that in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I could be wrong on the interpretation of what she was. Mm -hmm. But okay. the, the issue mm -hmm, is whether or not, it's not even about prostitution or anything like that. It's about whether or not sin and the approach to someone committing a, a sinful act should be with grace. We agree, yes. But yeah. the reason God, Jesus did not quote-unquote harp on the sin and was graceful and kind to this woman was in some ways because she wasn't, she's a human being and she was changing. She did the act or whatever it is that she was doing. Jesus he, she washed Jesus' feet with her here or whatever. And then over time, she became a different person. I think the reason why I'm a bit... So it's coming, it's coming like piece by piece because I remember she was... Uh, if I remember the story correctly, she was very emotional Wait, when, story, as she approached. The, way, the story, by mm -hmm. the way, doesn't matter. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm making... I'm, I'm leading up to my point. Oh. She was already remorseful by the time she even washed his feet with her hair, right? Yes. Which would indicate to me that even in her mind, what she was doing was bad. Yeah. I I, I think that that for me is very important because I would not be in support of anybody engaging in X work if they deem it bad or beneath them, right? So I right. think that that's very really important. And there is a sector of women, not even just women, but men too, because uh, men are X workers too, that don't see it as this bad thing. I need to do yeah. my research more about their perspective. I can't really speak on it too much, but I know that they exist, right? Now, going back to Jesus, again, I don't remember the story specifically, so I'm really like leaning on you guys for this part, but was it stated outright that the only reason why he showed her grace is because she wanted to change or could he just have showed her grace as a human being and what she was doing had nothing to do with how he was treating her? I think she, she he showed her grace because she was a human being. And I think I, I, I would agree with that. Again, I'm, I'm just kind of leaning on you guys. I'm sorry. Could you hear me? Yeah. I'm sorry. I had to switch my headphones. But and, and, and I think that that's the key here. It's I, I'm not trying to convince anyone that X work is a good thing. That is something no, that no, people no. should aspire want, to be. I don't in. want it to mm -hmm. be on just SEX only. I'm just talking mm -hmm. because it would be a sin among many sin. And that's why for me, Alicia, I actually agree with Alicia and I, I think we did need to clarify and change the, the stories. But mm -hmm. for me, it was it didn't matter because we're talking about sin and the approach to sin, right? And if sex is a sin outside the context of marriage, from a Christian perspective, it shouldn't continue, right? It should be stopped from a, like mm -hmm. a Christian perspective. And so the idea that we should be graceful and give grace and kindness is not wrong, but to pretend like we should not confront sin as a Christian is kind of weird to me. Like, oh, no, yeah. you, you need to not do this. Like, you, you shouldn't. If we think no, it's I won't. Wrong, mm -hmm. it, sorry, go ahead. No, but again, I again, I, I like we we keep like going back to that distinction, Repent which I, no I think more. is sorry. Repent <laughs> and no more. Yes, Tiff. Go ahead. No, I I just think again we keep going back to the distinction, which is that you could disagree with something, you can have your um your perception of it, you can have your viewpoint on it, and you are entitled to that. However, you want to feel, you're you know you can feel that way. But the way in which you engage with other people, again, we're talking about the consequences of that. And you tell you guys read um, like uh, telling the story again just reminds me that even though she was this quote unquote sinful woman, he still treated her like the human being she was. And if we are yeah. going to focus on that for just a second, if we could focus on that for just a second, that's literally what I'm advocating for: treating ex workers like the human beings that they are, even though you would not engage in ex work, and even though you deem it beneath you. No, they're that's, still that's human, my own point. We should treat them like humans, like. Mm -hmm. 
What I am saying, though, from a biblical perspective, you don't just hug people who are sinning and continue to sin. You have a responsibility to help people out of their sin or not engage. Like, you don't just say, oh, my God, you're sinful, but whatever God loves you, so let's go. Like, that's not how that works. Like, no. The, no, there's no interpretation of the Bible that is like that. Like, for me, I don't know it, but maybe there is. So, so a question I on that, think... your alternative is to shun them then? Wait, what's the alternative? In your mind, just in your opinion. All right, give me an example, because I don't know what you mean. Okay, perfect. We, I can kind of go along with this. So Jesus befriended, we'll say, this sinful woman who continued to sin and sin and sin, even though he was showing her like all the grace in the world, treating her like a human being and stuff like that. Should he have been willing to cut ties with her because he didn't see any change or just continue to allow her to make her own decisions and continue to show her just, I guess, a normal level of grace as a human being? Um. You can still respect someone and then have them separate from you. Um, mm -hmm. Because uh, the, I asked my pastor this, and I'm trying to find something in my notes from church. Sorry. Um, I'm trying to find the Bible verse about giving clear instruction as to how sin, sinning believers can be should be handled. Um, I can't find it, but in Matthew, there is a verse that talks about sinning and what you should do um, when people continue to sin. And so there are instructions about moving away from sin and not involving yourself with people who sin and continue to sin. So yes, remove yourself. You can mm -hmm. love them from a distance, but you cannot continue to be in an environment where it is being sinful. It is sinful. Oh yeah, I like that. Love from a distance, for sure. I'm also, by the way, do not take, I, I think I speak with authority generally, apparently. I don't know why or how, because I'm laughing. Don't take anything I say about the Bible seriously. <laughs> like, I, I, I believe you should, and you should investigate it, but please investigate, like, investigate a lot. I am not an expert on this, and I am, like, one of those Christians who is not very solid on my faith. I just believe, and I read, and I ask questions. So yeah. when I talk and I am sound affirmative, I'm not, like, shutting down conversation. Please push back. Like, please. Yeah. I want I think uh, vitamin is just out. Go ahead, Alicia. <laughs> no, I was going to say, um, to clarify that, I don't even know, whatever, how we got here. But like when you're talking about like, <laughs> when you're talking about um, uh, uh, don't deal with sinners and things like this, they're talking about like believers. They're talking about people who are in the faith, who proclaim one thing and live a different way. So like if you're claiming to be a believer and you don't, I don't know, present as a believer, then as in like, you're not loving God, you're not loving yourself and you're not loving other people, then like, yeah, like you have to be treated outside of here because like you're, you're a danger to, to the, to the people in the faith and you're a danger to yourself. Right. So like, but even if we're talking in terms of, even if we're talking in terms of, um, of, of scripture, what, what I've come to understand about sin, right? Like if, if the idea, if, if, if Jesus said, love God, love yourself, love people that covers all the sins, right? Like if we're, if we're loving God, we're keeping God's commands. I mean, that's what the Bible says. If we're loving each other, we're not stealing, we're not killing, we're not um, defaming, we're not uh, dragging for the sake of dragging. And, and even if we're talking about going back to the conversation about like um, sex work or, or all these other things, to me, and, and also I don't debate the Bible because it says not to debate the Bible, right? Because it's foolish. Like it's silly, it's a silly conversation because if we don't believe the same thing, there's nothing for us really to talk about. Um, and it, I mean, we can talk, but like debating, like you have to believe yeah. what I believe. Like I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But what I will say is like, um, I also, I also feel to me dragging other people for involving themselves in sex work. That is sin to me because like, what am I doing? Is this loving the person? Is this be? Is this is this is this respecting their humanity and the God within them? Then I no. Mean, some people could say yes if it is if because for me dragging mm -hmm. me would probably make me change. Like <laughs> coming to me with like kindness and hug and like I don't like that. Just tell me what I need and how I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? Like in my mind, 
Maybe I'm sorry. I'm jumping in. I'm just scared. I'm going to go out again before, no, like, no, when I try to talk. Um, but also exactly what is yoked. So, like, let's not pretend like the equally yoked thing doesn't exist. <laughs> so, like, well, oh, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. But I'm what I was going to say before I fell out was it's again about when we were talking about what is your intention when you're talking to that person? Like a lot of people come in the name of the Lord, but they're really just there to big up themselves because like the kingdom of God doesn't need you to put people down in order to make it look good. You can say, Hey, this is what the kingdom of God has to offer. This is what it takes to get in there. And if they do it, they do it. If they don't, they don't. But to sit around, you're not going to get in and you should have did this and you're not good enough and yada, yada. Something that I don't know why y'all are doing this. How you do it matters. We agree. You should do it. Like, and the it is talk about the sin and condemn the sin. Like, are we going to pretend like we shouldn't do that? No, no, no. I I think, oh, sorry. I'm sorry about it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Like it's been so weird all night and I feel bad when I just jump in because you know, I don't okay. like that. Um, it's, it's not, what am I trying? Can I jump in? Just Anyone one second? can jump in. Cause the, the, yeah, I want to hear this. If it is, if it, I'm going to say something that I kind of already said, so sorry, apologies in advance. If it is deemed a sin by the collective, then it should be called out. My question is the why behind it being um, a sin, essentially. And now I'm not, I'm not necessarily, see, this is what we're talking about Christianity. I get it. I'm not going to provide any pushback. Ex worker and Christianity does not go together. Understood. Uh, 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 Look, (laughs) I'm willing to, I'm willing to. Out if they want to make that connection, but I'm just Don't saying, like, let's go and see if they're getting swallowed. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but again, if I were to just bring it to society, um, it's just like, again, I, I'm, I'm gonna just say this one last time. I, I, I don't mean to keep repeating myself, but it, it really is about us each thinking about why this is considered bad behavior, really getting down to the root of it, and then once we're able to take it apart, then deciding for ourselves you know, based on our own principles, based on our own moral code, what what's bad about it and what, or if it's bad at all, just deciding for ourselves if that's what we want. But no matter what we decide, if we do decide that it's all sinful, even if you're not religious, that it's all bad behavior, don't do it. I still feel like some level of respect should be given to these people. If they're in um, an atmosphere where they're consenting to what's being done, they're um, supporting their self, they claim to be happy, it just is what it is. I'm not going to go back and forth with somebody else about their own livelihood. You know? Yeah. And a lot of them, this isn't what they do in perpetuity, right? Uh, for the, I feel like the, I, I should do the research on this, but the vast majority of them, they probably only do it for a certain amount of time and then move past it, right? So that that's all I have to say. Yeah. Can can I can I add something to this again? This is not obviously this is not supposed to be a conversation about the Bible, but however, like there are people saying. Well, when you talk about the when you talk about the gospel, you have to condemn and all this other stuff. But then it says there's no condemnation in Christ. When you when you say think when you, like right. you we really do have, to, have to do that. What are we saying? That like, is something you made up exactly because like because like I care about the soul of a person, right? Like when I'm first, no one. And this this frustrates me about the Christian community because no one is going to listen to you talking down to them, telling them that they're nothing. And you're, in, you're like, like I, I really feel like a lot of believers like to look down on people that they consider sinners because it makes them feel elevated. It makes them feel good. Yes. And so for me, if that's where you're coming from, you're wrong off bad. You're it not a off. Christ. It makes <laughs> so, you so are like, counterfeit. Right. Right. I'm so if sorry. We're, if we're, but wait, if we're, but wait, 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 wait. If, right. if we're talking I'm so, about, so sorry. So, so sorry, guys. I have to go. But oh, this was amazing. Day. I'm going to catch the replay. Everyone have a good night. You have a good night, too. Bye. Bye. You're amazing. Oh, yes, you are. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I just, I, I just, I just think. I, I think, yes, yeah, sin, sin, okay, as a believer, there are things that I believe. I am not, this is not me saying you have to believe what I believe, but I, I do think that there are things that I feel convicted 
about for myself. And I do feel like other believers should feel similar in, in that way, right? However, the heart of the matter, like the reason why Jesus was pissed off with the Pharisees is because their heart was wicked. They wanted to be powerful over people. They wanted to lord over people. And I think that a lot of us, <laughs> a lot of us uh, believers, and I'll say us because I, uh, unfortunately I represent some of the people, right? Like a lot of people, a lot of believers want to lord over people. A lot of people don't care about the soul of a person. They don't care about them going to hell. They don't take, they don't care about them going without. They don't care about them starving. They don't care about them having food, water, shelter. They don't care about none of that. They just want to be able to say like, oh, I'm more pious than you, than you are. I'm more holy than you are. And for me, that is pride. That is sin. That, yeah. and, and so, so if you're concerned with the heart of the person, like, and this is why even like with even uh, evangelism. evangelism, like when people go out, like I've always felt, I've always felt irritated because it feels like colonization because it is like, I, like I'm talking to you about my faith so that you believe what I believe and you think how I think and you have to operate how I operate. You have to do what I do. You have to put down yourself to put on my God or to put on myself, my, the, the vision of God that I see. So this feels like feel good Christianity. And here's why. It's, but, but, but it's, it, but it this, is. I've seen this song so many times. There's no condemnation. Therefore now there's no condemnation in the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's for Christians. Everyone yeah. else is condemned to hell. <laughs> like right. it's not a thing where you're like, there's no condemnation. There is condemnation. But, but I think, but I'm, what I'm saying is when you're approaching someone with, by condemning them, no, that is not, that is not, no. that is not you caring. And that, that's no. what I'm talking about. Like Agreed. you saying. No, but yeah. I think I agree with you though. Mm -hmm. I think we started by saying, I started by saying how matters, how you approach things matters, but to pretend that, okay, we all just sin and come hither. We're going to all sin together. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is not a truthful way that we approach no, no, no. the Bible. No, no. What I'm saying is the reason behind, it's not even how you say it. It's also why. Like, so they don't like go there, to, hell. to me, to me, there's like, you said what? So they don't go to hell. I mean, well, yes. That's like, not, obviously, you like, got to do that's all the, of that, that's not why you care. Like it's, and, 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 and vitamin, that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of people put on like, oh, I don't want you to go to hell. You don't care about these people going to hell. You don't care all about where they're going to be at. You just you wanted know. that. You weren't going to let go of the opportunity. To point yeah, out that they were because, going to hell. Because if you really cared about behind, their soul. Oh, sorry. We are, going, we are going behind what is being said and getting to the intent, which fear, fine. But we've already conceded. And again, you guys are doing this thing where you're using the how to get to the why. How matters. I agree with you, but we've conceded that how matters. That is That confession is made. Why you do it is that you want to save their soul. If that is not why they do it, that's fine. It's not here, nor there. But as a Christian, you don't get to say, my friend is sinful I believe my friend is sinful, but I don't talk to him. I will continue to be his friend. I will continue to be her friend while she's living in sin. That is not what the Bible requires. You need to be equally yoked. And I think the teaching here, all right, Alicia, go ahead. I disagree completely. If, if we're looking at if we're looking at the life of Jesus, the example, he was always yes. equally yoked. He was always hanging okay. out with people. Who he not talked to everybody. But the whole point is that you are progressively moving towards being a more righteous person. Of course, they were unequally yoked with the with God personified. I, I don't even think that they. I don't even think that Jesus was cons, was. I don't even. This is just my again. I am not a scholar. I did not go to seminary. None of that. I'm just no, a person, a regular either. person, right? So, like, these are just my opinions. But but I do think that I do think that I would that, say take my opinion with a grain of salt also, yes. but also don't take Mine my opinion too. at all. <laughs> I would say, please, I'm just Alicia, okay? Yeah. But um, so I could be completely wrong. But but I also from what I understand and from what I feel, I guess, like from reading scripture, is like it's it's considering the soul of a person is not just where your where your soul is gonna be it for eternity, right? Like the soul of a person is also their well-being. They're like when, when we're talking about like Jesus going to people and like spreading the gospel, so to speak, because that's, I mean, he was just like being himself. He cared about the people. He cared, like he fed the people. You know what I'm saying? Like he he literally fed the people and talked to them in a way that they could understand. When even meeting people, 
whatever, meeting people on, on the road or wherever he was, like, it wasn't just like, Hey, you have to follow me. You have to follow my God. Jesus never hardly ever said, like, it's like, I know you, I know that deep longing that you have. I know that you're hungry. I know that you're thirsty. I can give you water that, that you'll never thirst again. Like he was meeting their need because he knew their soul. And for me, I guess, I guess I feel like a lot of believers go into the world trying to make disciples, which is a whole different conversation, but make disciples of Christ when really they're just doing something to check off a box, to feel good about themselves and doing something because their pastor said so. What I really feel like evangelism is, is caring for serving other people by serving people and loving people, which is what the Bible says. I will, they will know you by, by the love the you fruit, show each other, the fruit, your fruits, by yeah. the love, like, yeah. and, and Christians, what I see the, the most like prolific Christians, they're not loving anybody. They're loving themselves. Yeah. No, you know I, I mean? agree with you. No, I agree with yeah. you. And I have a lot of critique, but I think, I think there is a sect of Christianity that shies away from the responsibility to correct. And I think, I don't know where I fall in this because I'm not about to correct anyone. I'm not about to be out here. Like, I, I don't care. Um, that's, that's not honest. my ministry. <laughs> Yeah, like that's not my ministry. However, I do think I'm recognizing that for me, that is hypocrisy within my own religion. Because there is a duty in there to do that. And it feels sometimes that we shy away from it and say, oh, it's not there. And I think we justify the discomfort around wanting to say, you know what, maybe that sinful person I shouldn't be around <laughs> I, I don't know. I understand. I, I think I think even when it comes to correction, I think there has to be a relationship there. Oh, and yeah, there has yeah, like yeah. there has to be care. So like, yeah, don't the people and who are standing you, on the corner yelling at people, you're out of line. Okay. What if wrong. the correction <laughs> needed in that oh, situation? Matter. What if the correction needed in that situation is not for the other person? It's for you. You know, if you're recognizing sin in that other person to the degree where you're like, oh, I need to do something about it. And yeah, you can go to them and try to talk to them respectfully. But if they don't change, then the conviction may be, OK, it's time for you to let go of that person. And a lot of times people will sit there and cut, try to browbeat that person instead of listening for the lesson for themselves. Yeah, I mean, I think the reason behind why people are doing it is justified, can be criticized. I think it is important. But I think, I don't know, I always get, because the bad parts of what I'm a part of, I like to put it at the forefront in so far as like, I don't like hiding the fact that, yeah, Christianity is kind of judgmental. And like, I recognize that. And I'm owning that, like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> It that's, is what it is. That's fair and honest. And it's and it's honestly not like every time, every time I say I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, there's somebody that's like, you, you slave mentality, you like, you know, you, you white supremacist, whatever. And it's just like, and I and I have to eat it. I have to yeah. eat it because it's like fair, right? Like I can't, I can't, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like Christianity hasn't had or or people, hmm, people, I would say Christians and the Western idea of what Christians are, because I understand Christianity is a global like religion and yeah. it doesn't necessarily represent all Christians, but I know people here have used Christianity, the Bible to enslave, to overpower, you know, all these different things. And so I'm just like, you're right. You know what I mean? Like, and also my, my relationship, my belief has, is actually not based on, and I, and I can say this now is not based off of fear and shame like for, oh, because for a lot of people mine. that's that it is mine. <laughs> that is fear of hell and shame of my flesh what do you mean that is that is <laughs> the baptist in me from jamaica is about shame 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 and You're it's always about hell fear, fear, fear. Yeah. it's always yeah. about hell what do you mean yeah <laughs> like of course like yeah, my don't, don't talk nothing. to me like that so for people who don't want nothing, I get it. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, people are saying, let's move on. So my bad. I'm sorry. I must be right. Oh, when did we ever listen to the chat about when the... <laughs> Girl, ooh, let's go into the after show. I'll see you guys on the other side of this. Um... 
so I'm not I actually I remember exactly how we got to the the Christianity conversation. However, um, when it comes to sex work, I think sex work is work, and I think that is important as a justification for kind of how I approach this conversation. Um, I do think engaging in it has a ton of societal consequences, um, particularly for women and particularly for women who are visible. And then minority women and Black women in particular, it, it can be detrimental for their lives. And so I think in having the conversation generally, it cannot be had without talking about the consequence. And even if we're talking about overthrowing a system that demonizes women for autonomy over their bodies and using their bodies how they want, I will question autonomy later. But I, I think it would be disingenuous to not highlight that there are social, political, and economic consequences for engaging in this behavior, just generally. The system hasn't changed yet, even if you're in a, a, an attempt to change, if you're, we are attempting to change it. So, yeah. I agree. Oh, Go ahead. I just said I agree. Oh, yeah, period. Well, that that was my closing that I thought yeah, I would have I thought I was gonna get dragged away. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like this. I, I thought I was gonna get dragged, but we we were supposed to end in three hours and we're at three hours and forty four minutes, so we can do our closings and all you guys can ask me questions or ask each other questions. I don't care. I actually like this, so thank you. Alicia, why are you such an angel? <laughs> oh, she's saying that now. I'm blushing. Holly. <laughs> well, not Holly, but Venus, we didn't get a chance to um go over oh, the you lyrics. Know what? Goodbye. To the your what? um the lyrics to your uh to one of your one of your favorite songs. Oh, nasty girl. <laughs> oh, period. I actually had I put it up, and we were supposed to go over it then. And I didn't want to interrupt the flow of the conversation, so I let it go. Um, so during the early 2000s, um, even Pink, there was this move, I think, um, and I think people thought it was feminist to like shame other people. Um, and in this way, we had Pink with Nasty, um, Stupid Girl, right? And in this song, it seems like she was berating women who wa wanted to be more, quote-unquote, feminine and saying women should want to be the president and play football because we are, those women are feminist and these other women are stupid girls. Um, and I think that embodies in some way the the kind of push to make women feel like they had to be this way or that way, which is moving women from one box, in my mind, to another, right, another box. Um, and I think this embodies a similar um, thing. It, it embodies a similar paradigm. And you know this breaks my heart. Because <laughs> Beyonce... Also, to be fair, I've gone through Beyonce's older lyrics. Um... And girl, cater to you, girl. <laughs> cater <laughs> to you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Even upgrade you. You know what? Let me leave Beyonce alone and let's get no, into But so. why is upgrade you my song? And when I think about the time of my life when that came out and everything, I'm just like, ooh, this is horrible. No wonder. But I still love that song to this day. <laughs> girl. The, so... Uh, this song embodies what um, I think Melissa was going for um, in different ways, but it's also hugely problematic. I hate reading lyrics, so if anyone wants to read the lyrics, let me know. Um, if anyone wants to sing it, let me know. The, uh, vitamin, I'm looking at you. Alicia, I'm looking at you. I'm not even going to try to sing a dang one thing. I can barely talk. Mm. I ain't doing it. He's nasty. Sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh. clears throat> oh, you're serious. <laughs> I guess I'll bite the bullet. <laughs> go ahead, Penelope. Oh, Coco. Go ahead, Coco. <laughs> 
All right. So the lyrics go, use a nasty, trashy, sleazy, classless. Yeah. Uh, nasty put some clothes on. I told you. Don't walk out your house without your clothes on. I told you. <laughs> Girl, what you thinking about looking that toe down? I told you. <laughs> These men don't want no hot female that's been around the block female, you nasty girl. And repeat. All right. Get into the verses, okay? Shake <laughs> Shaking that thing on that man, looking all stankin' nasty. You mm. swore you look cute, girl, in them dukes? Booty all out looking trashy. Sleazy, put some clothes on. I told you, don't walk out your heezy without clothes on. I told you, <laughs> and we repeat the, the chorus. <laughs> okay, so they repeat this so much. Oh my goodness, I did not know it was this repetitive. Okay, um, booty all out, tongue out her mouth. Cleavage from here to Mexico. She walks with a twist, one hand on her hip. When she gets with you, she lets it go. Nasty, put some clothes on. You look toe down. Nasty, don't know why you will not sit down. Boots on her feet, swear she is in heat. Flirting, wait, why are you moving? Okay, wait, okay. Flirting with every man she sees. Her pants hanging low. She never say no. Everybody knows she's easy. Nasty put some clothes on. You looking stank. Nasty, where's your pride? You should be ashamed. You make it hard for women like me who try to have some integrity. This is the line. Make- this is the line. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. This is so sad. You make it hard for girls like myself who respect themselves <laughs> and have dignity. You're nasty, girl. You're nasty. You're trashy. You're classless, girl. You're sleazy. You're freaky. N A S T Y. You're nasty. F R E A K Y. Word to Nikki, that's how you spell that correctly. You're freaky. <laughs> Girl, where's your P R I D E? Put some clothes on. This, yeah, this, this verse right here. This is internalized misogyny. <laughs> Fit me on, say. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's the, this is the, all right, thoughts. I, mean, I don't think I. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say it's just sad because, again, going back to what another woman chooses for herself has nothing to do with you, and that we perpetuate this even to twenty twenty four is concerning a little bit. But you know, it is what it is. You think Beyonce was talking to someone very specific? I think Beyonce saw someone that was real mad. <laughs> it's like, <"Ugh." laughs> like you nasty, you sleazy, you classless. <laughs> That's funny. Who's on the writing credits for this? You make it... Is that well, on oh, the stage? We we, uh, let me go up there in two seconds. You make it hard for women like me who try to have some integrity. You make it hard for girls like me who respect themselves and have dignity. You're a nasty girl. You're nasty. You're trashy. You're classless girl. You're sleazy. You're freaky. N-A-S-T-Y. You're nasty. F-R-E-K-Y. You're freaky. <laughs> this, song, this song goes hard. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I never they knew how mean this real. song was. I never knew. I think as a as a well, this came out in like what 2011? No, 2001. I must have been like 11 years old. So I'm I'm singing this song, not having any idea what they're talking about, but it's still reading the lyrics. I'm like, oh, that's actually really, really mean. It's really mean. But it's supposed to be empowering. It was empowering at the time. 
And I think it still can be if we reclaim it now that we don't need to lean on men in order to basically like eat and live and stuff. We are not as threatened by women who might take a man and might be doing us a favor. So now we can just sing it and be like, yep, that's us. Um, Beyonce is a writer. Anthony Dent. Um, there are two others, um, Bassey and Hackett. I don't know them people. <laughs> Beyonce. Yeah, no, like, as soon as I w- we were talking about Melissa, I thought about it, and this is a song that came to mind. <laughs> I just, like, maybe it could be satirical now and reclaimed. I want to say I saw something, like, within the last couple of months that said that it might have been satirical, but I can't remember clear enough to for you to quote me on that. <laughs> Got oh, it. like how um they Beyonce wrote Bootylicious because she was getting fat shamed. Right. Because, I mean, I can see how in this era it really was a threat, but now it would be a favor. But they would, they, again, it's one of those things where it's like they weren't always fully clothed. I mean, you know, the vibes they were giving off wasn't like, you can buy me. I saw their midriffs and the hips and thighs and, you know, wearing bras as tops and all types of things. Oh, it was not a parody. I remember the video, actually. They had these women walking through I remember through the video, too. They, they had women walking through this thing that changed them into good girls. <laughs> they, they literally Yeah, had but the outfits they had on... Oh, the, the outfits, outfits they had less. on <laughs> were not... That's what I'm saying. Like, they were not typical of what they usually wore. Yeah, girl, they were telling so that why, they like, you can't be serious. Women. Beyonce was in there changing women's lives, make it, put it, putting it, put on clothes on them. <laughs> Beyonce was putting on, putting, <laughs> Beyonce was clothing these girls. <laughs> uh, period. Because women make it hard for other women who have integrity. That makes it hard for them who have dignity. If you act a certain way, you make it hard for other women. Tell me that is not misogyny. Uh, go ahead. Exactly. No, no. I was I was gonna say like that line. It's it stands out now. At the time, it didn't. But like when you when you pointed that line out, it's like no. Again, if if the man that you have or whoever you know this this man is who you know making it hard for her, it's her. Like, I mean, yeah. it's him, excuse me. It's him making it hard for her. Like it's, and, and so I think it goes back to this, um, to this idea when we talk about like, oh, you know, let's, let's put down the women in this work or who present themselves this way. But it's like, literally they're wanted. Like, like men say out their mouth one thing and obviously their actions say something else. And so it's like, you, again, you fighting this other woman is not the problem, girl. Like well, no, your, your man is, or whoever she's yeah. talking about. But the, a fundamental part about this has to do with controlling man's sexuality. Like, if you don't, you make it hard for women like me who have integrity. If I have my husband, he gonna cheat with you. So put some clothes on. <laughs> Go in. I mean, having right, good like hair, being Becky with good hair will do it too. Like, it's not like Lemonade didn't also say dust to side chicks. Like, she's very much saying at all times, like, you... You can leave. I, my man, my man. I mean, here's the thing. I'm not going to, I'm going to look, I'm a side eye a woman who has a relationship with a guy who's being delusional about, you know, his culpability and the stuff that he does. However, if you already have an established relationship, I can empathize with you wanting to maintain that relationship you already have. But if you just a woman out in the street talking about some, oh, what you're doing makes me, and you have dressed, Melissa, and you say, oh, what you're doing is making men relate to me a certain way, you need to get away from me. I just think it was like a big part of that time, though, too. Like, even... Um, I think Haley Williams from Paramore came out and was like, oh, yeah, misery business was kind of slut shaming and I'm going to steal your boyfriend because I'm not like other girls. And she came out and she was like, yeah, I was kind of whack. But like, does the song go hard? Yeah. You know, and Pink and all these other women. It was just kind of a sign of the times at that 
Like, yeah, I think Pink, more than anyone, Pink thought she had an anthem girl. Pink thought, she said, stupid girls, where are the the girls with the um the, the dreams of the girl president? She does it in the video next to 50 Cent. I was like, girl, I went in, I was like, period, Pink, you let them know women can be uh, presidents too, and they need to go and be presidents. And I was like, oh, 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 this is bad. This is real. <laughs> Let me pull up things long. I don't know if the lyrics, the, I don't know if the lyrics were as bad as the video. I was but... going to say, I watched that video on the, well, you know, whatever. I watched the video earlier today and, and I was like, oh, wow. She was calling out people specifically. She was calling out, um, what's her name? I was gonna say Ray J. Kim Kardashian. She was calling out like Britney Spears. Britney Spears. Um, who's the girl that was in the Dukes of Hazard? Oh my gosh. And she used oh, to be Jessica Simpson. Jessica Simpson. Like, and I was like, wow. Oh, like, this was Hiltons. actually really disrespectful. <laughs> yes, the Hiltons. Yeah. What when she actually did perform it and took shots at Beyonce, and she thought I didn't know. But as a high-ranking member of the Beehive, I we see each other pink. I still like you, and I've not forgiven you for your black error, but I do still like you. <laughs> she did stupid girl. She did the single ladies dance. Wait, why don't you forgive her for her black error? That wasn't her fault. <laughs> <laughs> like she like she didn't even want to do that. Everybody got choices. <laughs> this is stupid girl. Yeah, this was the addressing um, white women, though. Most of the time, I don't really hear. Yeah, stay out the white women's business. Mm -hmm. What happened to the dream of the girl president? She's dancing in the video next to 50 Cent. They travel in packs of two and three with their itsy bitsy doggies and their teeny weeny teats. Where or oh, where have the smart people gone? Where or oh, where have they I feel gone? attacked. This I feel this was her teaser. What Wait. is wrong with tiny dogs and crop tops? What is happening? Girl, she came for the necks. She did not care. She hated them. Vitamin, did you say this was ether? <laughs> I said this was her ether. <laughs> she, she said, break it down now. The disease is growing. It's epidemic. I'm scared that there ain't a cure. The world believes it, and I'm going crazy. I can't take anymore. I'm so glad that I'll never. That'll never be me. I'll never fit in. That will. Um. Oh, I'm glad that I'll never fit in. That will never be me. Outcasts and girls with ambition. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Go period. Let these girls know. The vast is all around. A world disappear. You're only you. Maybe if I act like that, uh, whatever. But she dragged them. She was the having fun in the video, too. Like, this or that, as far as them. Why can't we just be like multifaceted and have varied interests in like she's be a complex She's not like thing. other girls. She's not like other oh. girls. She, they oh wear short shirts. He, she wears sneakers. <laughs> They're cheer captains. Yeah, she's on the bleachers. Please. 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 She's Please. on the bleachers. <laughs> Yes, quote that lyrical queen. Uh, maybe, uh, beautiful gowns. Uh, beautiful gowns. <laughs> a girl, period. All right, we have problems. I realize we spoke, we'll speak for eight hours, so no, Themis is not a Swifty. Absolutely not. Um, thank you all so, so much. You guys have your final thoughts. Uh, thank you, Alicia, for going back to these um Lyrics, because they were actually very important, and I almost forgot them. You still live four hours, LOL. Oh, four. I go on vacation, and you have time blindness. Ah! Okay. Well, get up. Get up. Get up. Wake up. Get him. I talk to you. Wake up. Anywho, how is the men's panel coming together? Wake up and level up. Um, we got one. No, one person declined. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you have one really person. You have a person or possibly people that I'm actually excited to see you talk with. Oh, I and I actually put another person. I put someone else in the chat that I wanted you to look at you and Jamile because I felt like I would like to see you guys talk to him. So, yeah, 
I thought I watched some of his stuff. I watched him and his twin talk. Um, I was bored, but I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I like <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. I bet you that day the chat is going to be in rare form. They're going to be saying all types of mess, but it is what it is. I feel like that. Would, I feel like you would enjoy the discussion, you and Jamile, if yeah. you guys were to talk to him, if he were to accept. I actually think so too. So we'll get into it. Yeah. All right. Final thoughts, everyone. Just love. You. I love you all. Oh, I love you. I love you all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say love yourselves and love each other. That's my final thoughts. In the name of Erica De Niro, protect your energy. Period. Yes. Period. Per. And keep your standards high as giraffe pussy. Oh. And I'm have sorry. Maybe on him 2024. <laughs> I just don't understand why the chat drags me and no one else. That's not nice, Demeth. That's I, not I, true. <laughs> Great discussion, Demeth. Uh, oh, thank you all. I actually appreciate you. Thank you so much, Alicia, Coco the Attorney, Level Up Single Mom. Um, Penelope, you are now a member of the panel, so thank you. And yes. um, DJ, thank you so much. I really did appreciate it. Bye. Yes, DJ Carrie. Bye. 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 Is that Usher? Uh, Usher. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.